Bada bing, bada bam. Welcome to this week's Bacon a Mer- a Murder Murder <laughs> Bacon a Mystery Bacon a Murder episode. Listen, this is our fourth rendition of this. We've already done three BAM episodes on this K drama, but it is so freaking good. It's called Marry My Husband. Every single person that I know is hooked on it. My mom's watching it downstairs. My sister's watching it. Every si- all the RM team, they be watching this. And everyone keeps telling me you need to finish the drama, Stephanie. Like actually finish something in your life for once because it's going to be worth it. So that's what we're doing. But before we get into it, because it's about to be a long one, in case you still live in 2013 and you have no idea what this show is about, let me catch you up to speed. I'm going to link all of the three previous BAM episodes, but like hopefully this, this is just a refresher. I cannot summarize everything that happened. <laughs> Gia is a bestie, okay? She's like the girl that you want to be friends with. She's a girl boss. She's not a gatekeeper, but she wasn't always this way. In 2023, Gia was miserable. She was married to Michael, who is the living, breathing definition. Are you like peeling a Satsuma Mandarin over there right now? Like that's kind of crazy. Hey, you know what we should try doing? Eating that in the shower. What? They said it's the best experience. The aroma, the steam. (laughs) Anyway, (sighs) Michael. Michael is a red flag. I don't even think he's worth the fabric of a red flag. He's more like a tissue paper that you use to wipe off your nosebleed. He would yell at Gia, belittle her. He would always get his way because if he didn't, he was not afraid to use violence against anyone who was probably 60% of his size. He does not follow the weight class rules when it comes to fighting. Also, he definitely just like primarily beats women. I mean, he did kill Gia, so there we have it. Michael's a wannabe investor who put Gia in debt just so he could keep buying stocks and spending all day on his ass playing video games. Like he just wants to buy stocks so that he can tell people that he's a day trader. That's the vibe he gives me. (laughs) Michael even quit his job to pursue being a finance bro. So now Gia has to work, pay bills, pay off loans, clean the house, keep his horrible parents happy. I'm getting indigestion just at the thought of that, okay? And the only reason she doesn't have kids to worry about is because Michael's balls are shooting blanks. I don't know. Sorry, not sorry, okay? Michael's what? Balls are shooting blanks. Beep, beep, blank, sperm, blank, gone. Who's not there? Sperm. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. You never heard that saying? Now I do. Anyway, after Gia got diagnosed with terminal cancer, she's pretty much ready to die. She's severely depressed. The only person keeping her going is Stacy, but you know the drill. Stacy and Michael are sleeping together and they end up killing her. And it's a whole thing, but she is not dead. She comes back alive in 2013 and now she's ready to do whatever it takes to not relive the same fate this time. If Gia wants to escape her fate, someone else has to take it from her. So with the help of sexy CEO Rich, Richard, Gia manages to get Michael to cheat on her with Stacy. She thinks it's all going to be over now. They're going to get married. Michael and Stacy are going to run off into the sunset. Wrong. Because in the last episode, Michael proposes to Gia despite cheating on her multiple times already with her best friend. <sighs> So in the last episode, we left off with Michael orchestrating this very elaborate proposal. It's in this giant, beautiful villa, and there's a whole drone show in the night sky spelling out, will you marry me? Gia pretty much has to say yes, because it's all part of her new plan. But what Gia and everyone else knows is that Michael would never go through the hassle of doing this elaborate of a proposal. Back in her first life, he proposed with a Nutella sandwich that had marry me, but it said me, marry me. Instead, he didn't know how to spell marry me. Yeah, but Richard is doing everything he can to make this as special as possible because it's her birthday. Now we jump back into the story. Michael obviously does not plan this proposal. Richard barely let him lift a pinky. This is for Gia. And just because she has to be engaged to this Pablo sandwich, Donkumong does not mean that she deserves a terrible engagement like last time. So Richard knows Michael is going to propose on her birthday and he finds his way in. Michael's in the break room at work trying to buy secondhand proposal stuff online like eBay or Craigslist. He's scrolling and scrolling, looking for the cheapest proposal decorations for $32. 37, this freaking insane, $37. Who pays $37 for a proposal? Richard walks in, sees Michael. He stops. He tries not to roll his eyes and he ushers him to his office. You come, come here. He's tired of this child's play. The company will provide a villa for Miss King's birthday to offer consolation for what happened recently. Consolation? For what manager Kim did to her. Talking about how he left her out of the proposal. Remember that? Bitch boy. Anyway, Mm -hmm. 
All right. Oh, it's for that. But a villa for consolation. Normally we do a condo, a week at a condo, but we're more generous this time, probably because her name went viral with everything. But Michael is eyeing his competition up and down. He just knows Richard's got something up his sleeve. But what? He thinks to himself, he's really in love with her, isn't he? Yeah, it looks like true love. Well, that's too bad. He clearly doesn't know women. Gia only loves me. Yeah. <laughs> his inner thoughts give him false sense of confidence, and he slaps his hand on Richard's shoulder in an attempt to little boy him. But Richard looks down at his hand, and this man child, I mean, that is enough for him. Like, uh, only one second of a half death glare, and Michael immediately pulls his hand back like it's on fire, like Richard's shoulder is a hot piece of coal. Richard doesn't even touch him, but Michael is triggered back to when his wrist almost broke because Richard wanted to know what time it was. Do you remember that? Oh my God, don't grab me like that, you crazy. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, sir. Michael straightens out his suit jacket, tries to find an ounce of dignity somewhere deep inside of his anus. This is a great opportunity then, if you are giving Gia a villa. Why don't we have the party with everyone on our team? She thought it was a birthday party, but then it'll be a surprise because I will be proposing to her. I'm going to marry Gia Kang. And throughout this whole monologue, we see Richard actually acting surprised. I don't know. He's genuinely acting like he's never heard of this before. And Michael's thinking, come on. Get your heart broken, you little punk. I hate your fucking guts, Richard. You're going to come too, right, General Manager Richard? Of course. I can always provide other support as well. Richard was able to set up a beautiful birthday party for Gia in this multi-level villa that overlooks the lake. I mean, it has a pier that you can walk down into the water. You can swim in the pool. The patio has a huge spread of desserts and everybody is just there to celebrate Gia. And I guess... I guess, Michael, like Richard really did it all. It has to be perfect for Gia. I mean, this is her first birthday in her new life. It's Richard's way of supporting her and taking care of her, even though it's something as unflattering as seeing her get proposed to by Michael of all people. And everyone from work is there. So Mrs. Yang, the shy manager from, you remember? The second manager from angry, misogynistic manager Kim. But now that manager Kim is gone, she's in charge of the meal kit. Miss Yang, right? Yeah, Miss Yang. Yeah, yeah we know Miss Yang. Yeah. Hannah, the happy one, that's also secretly Richard's stepsister. Stacy, the devil best friend. Richard and Michael, they're all there and they're all singing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. And just as they finish singing, Michael puts his hand over Gia's shoulder. And usually she would not be able to handle this level of cringe, but Stacy. Her best friend is sitting right next to her and she needs to make sure that this looks like absolute fairy tale perfection. Everybody's so shocked at how big Michael went for the proposal. And Stacy looks over to him in front of everyone with a forced smile. This is amazing. How did you come up with all of this? Michael is smiling to hide the fact that um he's just as surprised as Stacy. He didn't even expect the drones to spell out, will you marry me? He was just going to go onto the backyard, get on his knee, and then like propose. Yeah, like he knew about the proposal when Stacy knew about the proposal. <laughs> Everybody's eyes start shifting left and right. Michael doesn't have the answer, and Richard just lets him squirm. Uh, well, you know, Stacy, I'd do anything for Gia. Gia locks eyes with Stacy. And just plays it up for her. You know, I would have been happy with a cheaper event, but thank you. And for a quick moment, she looks over at Richard. And once they lock eyes, it's like she's saying thank you. It's so cute. And to recover from the trauma that is sitting next to Michael for even five minutes and smiling at Stacy, Gia decides to leave the crowd and get some fresh air alone on the pier. This villa, I don't know. I don't know if this is Richard's second home, third home, fifth home, or what. But to get to the pier, you got to walk on top of this patch of grass. Big patch of grass, like a big backyard. Then the pier itself is pretty fucking long. It's basically Santa Monica Pier in the backyard. I'm exaggerating, but not really. Like, it's massive. I don't know why it's so big. It's confusing. Gia's standing, just staring out into the black water because it's pitch dark out there. And swaying back and forth, just pondering her next moves. She's the queen's gambit. This is her game. We're all just living in it. And she's staring out into the peaceful, undisturbed water. And she hears these footsteps coming up behind her. And of course, it's, congrats. Have you still not forgiven me? 
Gia looks over at Stacy and you can just feel the literal lifetimes of bullshit Stacy has given her and she's sick of it. Because remember, Gia is still super upset with Stacy after the company retreat where Stacy attacked her to try and win the camper van and then splashed her with water when Gia didn't just offer it up on a silver fucking platter for her. Yeah. That one, okay? So Stacy ends up sleeping with Michael that night in the woods, comes back to work with a letter about how sorry she is about how she didn't think about Gia's feelings. Gia never responded. Stacy's laying it on thick with the egg. Yo, she's smiling. Gia, I'm sorry. Stop being mad at me, please. Let's go back to being good friends, yeah? She grabs Gia's arm playfully and is trying to like, Mm -hmm. tries to make Gia crack a smile in her direction. But Gia's just getting more pissed. She yanks her arm away from Stacy so hard that Stacy stumbles back on her feet. I can't figure you out, Stacy. But what's more important is, I don't really want to. Goodbye. And Stacy's like, Gia. Gia's already halfway off the pier at this point, but Stacy's not finished. Gia Kang. Stacy realizes that Gia isn't going to forgive her. So she actually decides to go uh, full crazy. Like, I don't like to call women crazy, but she's crazy, okay? Gia turns around to see Stacy has walked over to the farthest end of the pier. She's standing on the edge with her back to the water and half of her feet are off the wooden dock. She's trying to do that dramatic fall back into the water thing that the K-dramas do. So from now on, I'm just going to put it to you straight. If you see a white van, if you see a body of water, someone's either getting hit by that white van and getting amnesia, or someone is dramatically going to fall backwards into the water. It's never forward. It's backward. And then, and then when they fall into the water, they don't know how to fucking paddle or anything. They just like motionless, <laughs> sinking. Just, <laughs> that's true. And that would not work for me because I float. My mom said it's all the air in my head. So I float. Okay, I would be bobbing at the top and it would not be dramatic, cinematic, or cool. It'd be goofy. Now back to Stacy. The back end of her heels are fully off the dock and the only thing holding her balance are her grubby little toes and her heels. And Stacy can't swim. She's trying to force Gia into saving her life or letting her die. You know I can't swim. Back at the outdoor seating area at the villa, everyone's still gathered around giggle gaggling, chit chatting. Richard's standing off a little from, like a little off from the rest of the group, looking out into the water. And Michael's giving some lame joke to Hannah and Mrs. Yang, and they're trying to be polite. But Richard hears a big splash from the distance. Stacy had fully went underwater, and she's waiting for Gia to come get her. She looks helpless, not even moving. Her arms and legs are extended, and she looks like a little ghost gremlin coming out of the water. And of course, girly pop Gia dives in to save her. But as she swims all the way down, grabs Stacy by her wrist, Stacy activates. She's like a chia pet activating in water. She opens her eyes when she feels Gia grab her. She gets both hands on Gia's wrist and starts dragging her down with her. She's not even trying to kill Gia. It's like straight murder side vibes. Bro, what is yeah. going on? Gia's trying to let go, but Stacy's holding on tight when Gia tries to pull them back up. Stacy's grabbing her back down. I mean, it's crazy. They're both staring each other in the eye. It's it's insane. Stacy just looks back at her with this wicked smile on her face. But eventually, Stacy does let Gia back up. But the scene has a warning. Either Stacy gets what she wants or Gia goes down with her. That's the message Stacy is sending. Richard sprints over as soon as possible, but a little too late, okay, to save the day because Gia and Stacy have already, they're already found on the pier on all fours, coughing out the water from their lungs and catching their breath. Richard takes off his jacket in a fluid motion, wraps it around Gia, which like, I don't know how nobody has suspected how much they're in love with each other. Like, it's so obvious. Stacy could be the president of the country flapping around on the dock like a fish out of water and Richard would not even care. He only has eyes for Gia. Gia doesn't say anything. She's trying to catch her breath, but Richard, he can see it in Gia's eyes. Something weird happened on this pier. So Gia gets a dry pair of clothes. She finds her way to the group again in the living room, and Michael tries to wrap a blanket around her, but she ignores him and walks onto the couch with Hannah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Mrs. Yang goes to sit on the edge of the couch. Stacy's sleeping. She must have been so surprised. Yeah, what a relief. It would have been really bad. How did she fall in again? Everyone is under the impression that Stacy had fallen into the water and Gia saved her. But Michael knows better, okay? Michael been forking Stacy, so he knows she's a little crazy. She didn't, she didn't jump, did she? She slipped. She seemed drunk, though. 
Oh, uh, oh, really? Okay. Mrs. Yang, the ever not in the loop, but also still a likable character, says, I'm glad no one's hurt. Stacy should be grateful to you for the rest of her life. You're like her savior. Gia's got a cold beer in her hand, but Richard walks up behind her and swaps it very authoritatively, it's kind of hot, with a cup of hot chocolate. This will be better for you. It's hot. Michael's tucks it. Why, why you say that? Like, what, what do you mean? What did he do? Like, that's so authoritative. <laughs> it wasn't even like a, can I switch this out for you? Oh, like he cared for her. Yeah, he just like takes the beer from her hand, but not aggressively, and then replaces it with the hot chocolate. And it's just mm. the it's the extra step of thinking. Michael's toxic masculinity is showing, and he's like, why the fork didn't I think of that? And he aggressively throws a blanket on Gia's lap. Yeah, drink that. Let's bring your temperature back up. <laughs> Gia looks both disgusted and horrified, and Mrs. Yang, as always, breaking up the awkward silence, tries to get everyone to go back to their room. She's like, we should all call it a night. So the rest of the group, they agree to call it a night. They head up to their rooms. Gia stays behind to drink hot chocolate in the living room before heading to bed. When Michael gets upstairs to his room, he's drunk. He's so proud of his efforts. He chucks off his slippies, his little slippers, by freaking flinging them off his feet, letting them just shoot off from his foot. And he <laughs> says to himself, that was a textbook proposal. It went great. I could never do it again. No way. That was good. Oh, yeah. He's about to jump into bed, but he lifts the blanket and finds Stacy patiently laying there waiting for him. In his bed? Yes. This bitch was what pretending to sleep. In his room? Yes. In him and Gia's room? Well, no, they're not sharing a room because Gia would never share a room with him. But in his robe. What? She had completely covered herself with the comforter and she's just laying there, hair perfectly placed, head laying on her hands. Girl, we know oh, you are not here to get some Z's. Is she wearing clothes? Yes. Okay. I don't understand how no one else heard him scream, but maybe no one else cared, okay? Oh my God, what the hell? Stacy flutters her eyes and tries to make her voice raspy, doing the absolute most. You came home late, like a wife would say to her husband. W what are you doing here? <laughs> she just completely disregards his question and pulls the comforter up with a smirk. Get in bed. She just lays her head back down and gives him this angel of death smile. What the hell? I proposed today and Gia's in the next room. That's what makes it more thrilling. You don't want to? Are you drunk? You look really happy. Gia jumped in the water for me. Now it's your turn to make me happy. And she ah! holds her hand out for him to grab. And Michael looks like he's being hypnotized. He can't even look away. And they do the deed while Gia doesn't give a fork she doesn't even go upstairs okay richard comes back to the living room to check up on her and she's obviously still shaken up i mean stacy did just try to commit homicide there aren't the like these are not the usual types of games that stacy likes to play she's trying to explain to him how scared she is she jumped in she didn't slip and right in front of me Maybe I didn't know Stacy at all. I, I thought it'd be easy that Michael is trash and Stacy steals all my things, so I just need them to marry and become happy, but I was wrong. She grabbed my arm and dragged me down deeper and she was smiling. I, I wish it wasn't true, but no, she tried she tried to kill me for real. And she was willing to die as if dying in the water was nothing, and she didn't care about anything as long as I was dead with her. Richard sees her anxiety building, and even just hearing the words coming out of her mouth, she seems really distraught. Richard comes up with an idea. I want to show you something. So Rich Daddy Richard takes her out of the pier where a speedboat is docked waiting for them, and he drives her around the water in the middle of the night. They end up watching the sunrise laying out on the deck, and Richard says, when I was confused or ever unsure, I always came here. Once I cleared my head here, I felt like I could take another step. No one knows the future, Gia. However... We know more than other people, so don't be scared. You learn something new about a friend that you've had for 26 years. If Stacy showed you a side that she had never before, it means you're not an easy target to her anymore. Something's changing. Richard covers her with his jacket, and they both have a champagne flute in hand. I truly wish you a happy birthday. And they cheers their glasses, and they exchange a cute little smile. And she's like, thank you for the proposal. It was the best first birthday ever. And I'm just saying, can y'all fork already, okay? I always cry on my birthday, but never for shit like this. I love you. What? 
I do be kind of. <laughs> what? Anyway, the birthday is everything, and she walks into work the next day glowing. I mean, Atebo just gave her the best engagement of her life. Let's be real. I would be high on life. She walks over to the elevator where there's a crowd of coworkers just waiting, like usual, for the next little ride up, and they see Gia push her hair behind her ear with a shiny little ring on her finger. Miss Kang! Oh my God! What is that? Oh, <laughs> I'm engaged. Whoa, is that a full carrot? Mr. Park really outdid himself. It's so pretty. I'm so jealous. Gia's just milking this shit. Okay, she's holding her hand out proudly, pans it around so everyone can see it. But behind the crowd, you see one head taller than the rest. Just looking over, Richard. He looks disgruntled. He looks like he ordered an ice Americano and got a hot Americano. Just unpleasant. But he knows that she has a plan, so he has to go with it. The crowd gets pushed into the elevator, and they're all the way back, Gia and Richard, side by side. Gia's eyes widen a little, and she feels a hand next to her hand, and it's Richard's. Anyway, later when they take a break from not working, because none of these people work, they go to the rooftop to talk through the next part of Gia's plan. Why tell everyone you're engaged if you're just going to call it off? Because I'm going to call it off is why I'm telling everyone. Michael's life will take a bigger hit once everything's revealed. You know, I've gotten a lot better at this. What are you doing this weekend? Come to the UN department store with me. I'm going to milk him for the first and last time. It's a shame. I have a trip to Japan. Oh, well, you're going to miss out on a very big spectacle. Michael's face is going to be the perfect sight. I'll be rooting for you. It's weird, though. Richard is not the type to miss out on something for Gia's sake. But Japan it is. Like, I have a feeling something important is happening in Japan. Later, after work, though, Gia's jotting in her little notebook about what she's taking, what she's selling when she moves out of this apartment. Usually, I just thought of something. Yeah. She traveled back in time. She's not trying to, like, save the world or something. Oh, yeah. No, she's like, fuck y'all. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she she does not care. That's so smart, though. Right? Like, yeah. Girly Pop's busy. She's got a Tebar that's, like, lusting after her. I mean, what's the point of saving the world at that point? Anyway, she's writing in her little notebook everything, and the doorbell rings. Stacy. She opens the door. Hi, Gia. I just thought I'd give you this and leave. Your birthday present. She pushes a department store bag out for Gia to grab. Gia doesn't even want to touch the bag. So Stacy goes in and starts unboxing it. She pulls out a shoe box and inside are a pair of red stilettos. The same pair that Stacy would wear when she was forking Michael while Gia was dying in the hospital in her past lifetime. Turns out Stacy begged, pressured Gia at the shopping mall to buy her these red stilettos. So not only did she cheat with Michael in those shoes, Gia had purchased them for her. But it's but interesting. But this one's turned around. Yes. What does that mean? Exactly. And Gia is going through the seven different levels of trauma right now. But Stacy is not done. She sets the shoes to the side and tells her, and I want to give you something else as a wedding present. Is that okay? You're getting married soon, but you don't really know how to cook. I heard the UN Department Store Cultural Center has really good cooking classes on the weekends. I'll pay for it and we can do it together. I mean, knowing Stacy, this comes with ulterior motives and like we know what it is. Michael's mother had forced Gia to take these classes at this department store, cooking classes. So Gia knows that she'll probably be there. Stacy probably knew from Michael that his mom goes there. So putting two and two together, Stacy's probably doing this to sabotage Gia in front of her future mother-in-law before she meets her future mother-in-law. So Gia and Michael's mom have never met yet in this timeline. And so she's going to bring Gia and maybe make Gia look bad or do something. And then later when they have their big meeting, it's like, oh, that's that bitch from the freaking cooking store. Oh, she's trying to blindside her. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But Gia's intrigued. You had Ma's cooking class? She's strategizing. The class Mrs. Park was taking? This never happened before. I'm sure Stacy's evolving because I've changed my attitude. Gia takes way too long to respond, and Stacy is nervous. You, you don't like it? No, that's not it. I like it. Thank you. Oh, thank God. I, I'm just so grateful. Gia, I really am sorry. Thank you for the chance. I'm not going to disappoint you. I'm going to become the real other half, someone that you can really rely on. Gia nods in approval, but again, the plan does not come without any cost. Gia is sitting by her front door after Stacy leaves, and she pulls out the red stilettos, and she can't help but all the emotions flooding back in. 
I must have no talent for acting because it's so hard to pretend to be biting the bait when I know what's going on. G is crying, but smiling, but laughing, but also crying. I mean, if the bad guys weren't bad enough, I would be hesitant to take revenge, but they just won't give up and they continue to be persistently bad. So you know what? Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyway, the next day, she gets ready to meet Stacy the next morning at the UN department store. Weirdly enough, Stacy wears the same sort of outfit as her. Like, Stacy never had the same style as Gia, but she's like morphing into mini Gia. It's interesting. And they're walking through the front, and they see this Karen yelling at the front desk, complaining about how she never gets charged for parking, but this time she has to pay $8? What is this? And she's pissed. Gia and Stacy just walk past because the lady is crazy, but Gia already knows that's just Michael's mama, okay? And I think Stacy knows too. So they set up at their little station in the cooking class, start putting on their aprons, and Michael's mom bursts in, walks straight towards Gia like she's already got a vendetta against her, and pushes her to the side. This is my spot. Gia stands her ground. Goodness, well, everybody pays for this class. How are their assigned seats, ma'am? <sighs> Look at this young lady. I'm an adult, and I said so. Respect your elders. Move out the way. Go over there. Michael's mom just shoulders her way into Gia's spot like she's in the Super Bowl, just fucking body slamming her to the side, throws Gia's bag to the other side directly in front of her across the counter, and Gia's getting ready to fight back because her whole plan is to get Michael's mom to absolutely despise her. But Stacy cuts her off. Oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Oh, Gia, let's just go and do as she says. We'll go. Don't say sorry. Nothing's set here. Gia's like power strutting it. We thought Gia was a badass before, but she's like really stepping up her game for Michael's mom. Wait, do we know her strategy right now? Or yeah. No? Oh, oh, we do. What's her strategy? Just to look like the worst daughter-in-law, potential daughter-in-law. Oh, that's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But so, isn't that exactly what Stacy wants? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Gia's looking her up and down, but Stacy's acting like a sweetheart angel for this woman. The evil mother-in-law points at Stacy aggressively. See, that girl knows a thing or two. She glares at Gia. I swear, there will always be rude, ill-mannered people everywhere. Where do they learn? I guess they don't. Meanwhile, Mrs. Yang is stuck in the office on the weekend, pretty much working a job of three people to finish the meal kit project. And she starts looking for the evaluation papers of the Joe Mart tasting event. You know, the one that Michael and Stacy screwed up and almost killed someone at because they were too busy porking. Mm. But she gets sidetracked by a call from her deadbeat daddy. Her daughter is home alone. Her five-year-old daughter is home alone. It's like this whole saga. She's got to rush to the house. She gets into a taxi, but it's the weekend. There's so much traffic. She's freaking the fork out. Why is their five-year-old home alone? And she looks out the taxi window and guess who's there? Skirt, skirt in a motorcycle ready to take her to her house. Mr. Lee, the chairman's right-hand man, the what? stoic guy that acts like a bodyguard that she's got set tension with remember i told you there's something going on she rolls down the taxi window mr lee please save me uh -uh. and we see mr lee fly past all the traffic with mrs yang on his back and takes mrs yang right up to her apartment Wait, front what door car? what is he riding like, a motorcycle just weaving through the traffic like is he kind of look but he's an older man correct like a 40 50 40 50, 50. yeah 50 and he's like one of those like really uh, Zoom, zoom. Yeah, he looks like he would go to like an underground fight ring. Oh. But no, no, he looks like he knows. Hmm. He looks like a mafia man in a suit. Oh. oh. Yeah. Some tattoos, maybe. <laughs> Probably under his suit. Oh. Yeah. But he's like, now he's back to normal life. That well, was his past life. We don't know. It could be his current life. Okay. I love that I'm just like concocting a storyline for this man. Okay. Does he have must mustache? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's okay. not that mafia yet. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So she's frantically taking off the helmet, thanking him, bowing as she sprints to her apartment. And Mr. Lee is like, what the fork is happening? She gets through the front door and sees her deadbeat husband sitting at the table with their daughter who's eating cup noodles. Apparently, he was too busy to work to feed her anything better than instant ramen, but he thinks that his wife, Mrs. Yang, is being dramatic and goes over to the couch to finish his cup noodles in peace. Yeah, she's living a miserable life. She reminds me of Gia 2023 life. Wait, so she thought the daughter was home alone, but turned out the husband is home. No, he left for a while and then just came back with cup noodles. Ah. Uh. Meanwhile, at the cooking class, Gia slowly making her way through the recipe. And I mean, I mean, slowly, okay? Stacy's showing off. Just, 
the carrots, right? Uh, doing it so obviously that Michael's mom will notice. And she does. She points at Stacy. Your hands are quick and neat for a young lady. Thank you. I love to cook. Gia's just cutting one slice of carrot at a time, pushing it down with her other finger before moving on. It's giving a little Kendall Jenner cucumber vibes. <laughs> Michael's mom notices. But as for you, how are you going to cook for a family if you're that slow? They're not going to eat tomorrow at that speed. Maybe breakfast in two business days? Bruh. Oh, I was planning lunch in two business days. The mom is like, what did you just say? My boyfriend loves cooking, so he'll cook for me for those two days that I'm making this. <laughs> Men weren't even allowed in the kitchen back in the day. Yeah, well, it's not back in the day now. I'm happy with now. <sighs> I mean, this girl, it's obvious what kind of family she's going to marry into, which is how ironic, right? Stacy looks over and she's thinking like, yes, she's eaten this up. But also so is Gia. Michael's mom definitely has a thing for the chef who teaches the class, by the way, because he walks over to her and she's squealing like a little girl. I mean, she's just really annoying. She's giving teachers pet. She's all, sir, women who can't even cook are signing up for this class to try and seduce a man. You have to be very careful of these types of women. She is just chomping at a carrot, loving how everything is panning out. And when the class is over, it's time for everyone to present their plates to the chef to review. And even though Gia was slow, like the slowest one in the whole class, the chef is raving about her presentation. Goodness, Gia, how did you make it so pretty? That is amazing. You what did are make? like sandwiches. <laughs> He's was, like, it, was it that, revol- that pretty? Um, sure. Not really. I'd pay me maybe a good $7 for it, Max. Okay. Yeah, great job. Stacy and Michael's mom look over in pure shock and jealousy, and Gia remembers just how much time she was forced to learn this in the past. Michael's mom would force her to cook the same recipe over and over while Michael would yell at her about how useless she was. She thinks about Michael's mom. Thanks for the hard training. Oh, so she already practiced it. Yeah. Michael's oh. mom leans over, squints her eyes, and grabs a carrot from her side dish. Food shouldn't just look good. It's hard to make a good carrot repi. I don't even know if that's how you say it, okay? <laughs> and she shoves her grubby hands into Gia's bowl of cut carrots and tries a marinated carrot, and she can't believe it. She goes in for another one and another one. The taste. It's the same as the teacher's. Gia thinks to herself, yeah. Because I learned it here, and you taught it to me, Mrs. Park. But she doesn't say anything. And just like that, Stacy's plan has completely backfired because this is exactly what Gia wanted. And as they're walking out of the class into the mall, Stacy pouts. When did you learn how to cook? What's there to learn? I just followed the instructions. I wanted to make it pretty, so I went slow. Dang! Oh, well, I just learned what a carrot rapi was today. Oh, well, my dad taught me that a long time ago. Your dad was such a great person. It seems like Stacy has some sort of resentment between those words. But before she can comment, Michael runs over. Michael! Michael's here to buy me clothes for the family dinner where I meet his parents. Do you want to join us, Stacy, while I go shopping? Stacy looks like she'd rather die. Gia's looking at her like, I dare you. I dare you to come. Michael breaks the silence. I, I-, I didn't know Stacy would be here. Stacy's at a loss for words. She would probably shit herself before she can get a yes or a no out. So Gia goes over to Michael, wraps her arm around his. Babe, when are we meeting your parents? What? Well, we have to set a date. Stacy's feeling like a third wheel right now. Uh, I should go, guys. I have plans. If I knew Michael were coming, I wouldn't have made other plans. You have plans? As if she didn't want to just shop after class with her. Yeah, Gia, let's just hang out next time and I'll buy. Since I already got you a birthday and a wedding gift, next time it'll be a gift for you being my savior. That works. Gia turns to Michael. It's a date then, just the two of us, Michael. Michael's so surprised. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. That sounds nice. But Stacy cannot leave without doing something so utterly sinister. She gets right up to Gia, grabs her arm with a tight grip, stares into her eyes and says, I'm really alive because of you. And she walks off. Meanwhile, Richard's on the way to Japan when he notices the flight attendant holding a magazine. The front cover is what caught his eye. It's an authentic, that's the brand, diamond necklace. He remembers how Gia just casually spoke about Stacy getting a bigger necklace than her in the past life. He just wants her to always have the best of the best. He gets it for her. Duty-free Sky Mall vibes, bitch. Yeah. At the airport. 
on the plane. What do you mean on the plane? They they sell necklace on the plane oh, now. Oh, bro, you don't know? You don't know the Sky Mall? Wait, are you serious? Yeah, that's why every time you fall asleep, I be I be no. I be charging your card on no, the Sky Mall. No, 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 no. There's a Sky Mall brochure. It's literally called Sky Mall. You're kidding. Me. And then you just pick it up at the gate when you land. Are you serious? Yeah. You're telling me right now. Yeah, I'm telling you right Those now. Those booklets in there are shopping? Yeah, I think it only works international. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> my mind's blowing. Oh my, yeah. You're dead ass? I'm dead ass. So you just tell them, hey, I want this one? Yeah, and then you pay for it, and then it shows up at your gate. When you get out, You there's a gate, and then you're that like... That is so cool. Yeah, or sometimes <laughs> I think some airports, it's like at customs or something. But like, oh, is there... Man. That's so good. Bro, that's terrifying. It's like magic. <laughs> oh it's God. like sky magic, isn't it? That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. But Gia really is out here collecting bags. She heads straight to the Bobo Chanel store and sees a pink handbag in the center display. It's literally, I think they were scared of getting sued. It's half of the Chanel logo. What do you mean? Just <laughs> like it's just one C with the lock. <laughs> 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 That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> Gia picks it up. I want this one. Michael's hesitant. Hey, that looks very expensive. The bag isn't just expensive. Michael buys this exact bag for Stacy after Gia dies in the past. Gia needs this bag so that she can reverse the fate and the saleswoman comes in to sell it even harder. Are you newlyweds? Because that is the absolute perfect wedding gift. I haven't met my mother-in-law yet, but I hear that his mom has very high standards. So I thought I could wear this when I meet her. If that's the case, you'll need this bag. Gia nods. And it's not just her. We both work at UNK, actually. Everybody's dying to see what he's going to purchase for me. Even I feel pressured about the wedding present. She knows pride completely controls Michael. So it's just a good reminder to pressure him. Yeah, well, I am a legend at UNK, aren't I? So now he's convinced. We'll take it. And the whole time, Gia is leading the way, walking through designer store after designer store. And every time she walks out, Michael is following behind her with another three shopping bags. Literally 30 bags later, he's sitting in the lounge area with an ocean of bags around him. He's gone from complete denial to despair. He's laughing maniacally and then he just starts crying. How could she buy all of these? Gia's already, Why isn't he saying no? Because he just needs to marry her so that their debt will be shared. Oh, because now he's trying to marry her right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. yeah. Gia buys coffee and walks over to Michael, who's having a quarter-life crisis, and she's already adopted this new pink handbag. She's wearing the Bobo Chanel. Michael, isn't this purse beautiful? I love it. I finally feel like I'm up to par with your parents. Getting a family is really great. <laughs> it's pretty yeah they're all pretty all of them i realized yet again that a woman needs to meet a the right man a high quality man of course we do a woman needs to meet the right man well we have to have the family meeting soon we need to go somewhere to eat but how should we pay for the meal and he gets interrupted by Gia's phone because she's getting a call that she does not want to answer so she turns her phone over and silences it but michael has already seen the caller id lb uh, what are you talking about? LB, isn't that your friend who runs a restaurant? He snatches the phone off the table and answers the call. Hello? LB's shocked, but Michael keeps going. There's a lot going on, but basically, LB was calling Gia to let her know that the three high school bullies who are now sitting in front of him right now at the restaurant want to apologize. They want to apologize for bullying her in high school. They want to apologize for the way that they treated her at the high school reunion, and it's a whole freaking thing. They hate themselves for what happened. They blame Stacy. You get the drill. Redemption arc. We'll see, right? That's why LB called, but Michael picks up because he remembers LB runs a fine dining restaurant and for the meeting with his parents and the engagement party meeting with all their friends, instead of him paying out of pocket because Korean tradition is the man pays, he decides LB can give them a favor. Like if you're, that's your high school buddy, why wouldn't you give them a free engagement meal? Come on. <laughs> so that's why he's on the phone. And that's how LB finds out that Gia, his high school love that he still has a crush on, is engaged. LB is sad, but he agrees to it. And I'm living for this because Gia's having a come up right now. She's got the perfect proposal from Richard. Well, from Richard, but Michael. A whole shopping spree with Michael. And now LB, her high school love interest, is trying to give her the best engagement dinner. Like she's slaying. These men are bending over backwards for her. But Richard 
is not having the best weekend. He made his quick trip to Japan to break off the engagement with Yura. Remember the Chebar daughter his grandpa wanted him to marry? That's why he went to Japan, to break off their engagement in person. Then he rushes back to Korea and his grandpa has been hospitalized. He walks into the darkly lit hospital room that looks more like a presidential suite than a than a hospital room. He's there to see Grandpa Yu laying in bed in a hospital gown. I don't know why he's in there or what happened, but he looks fine. Your one and only grandfather was admitted and you come so late. If I had been more impatient, I would have died waiting. Richard mutters, you'll live to see another 10 more years. Because remember, he knows the future. What'd you just say? I just came back from Japan, grandfather. Well, did it go well? It's Yura. We only met briefly. It was very quick. There's no one like her, you know? She's a hundred times better than that Gia King. Okay, now he's really doing too much. Grandfather, just leave her alone. She has nothing to do with me. I can't just leave her alone. They're my feelings. You foolish boy. You were in love with someone who's taken. You broke the promise between two families, between our family and yours family. You used the family villa and the yacht and lit fireworks. I heard you even had staff fly drones. How is that just your feelings? Do you hear about everything I do? Of course, you're not free. Since your dad is no longer with us, you, you, are the, you are the one who will take lead and take care of over 600,000 employees at UNK for the next 30 or 40 years. You poor boy, you are such a fool, a fool in love. Goodness. Richard looks at him with the most sincere eyes, almost like he's about to cry. What? Richard doesn't want to remember, but he's going to die in 10 years. And he realizes that his grandpa is going to be really sad because his grandpa is betting on him being the CEO. And this is also his grandson, you know, grandpa, you sees Richard struggling. His eyes are pooling with tears. And this is like an old traditional Korean man. Like you do not cry in front of each other. So he's like, what is this? What's going on? And Richard just hugs his grandpa. I'll do better. Don't worry. Was it like a little emotional? Yeah, it was kind of cute. So the next day, Richard has plans to set things in motion. Now that his engagement is off with Yura, he's got a few more things to take care of. He asks Mr. Lee to come over with a trust agreement for his cat, basically putting a chunk of his net worth into a trust fund for his tabby cat. He signs off on the dotted line. Mr. Lee looks confused. No matter what happens to your cat, your cat will receive proper care here. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Are you going somewhere? Why the papers? Well, who knows what will happen to me, right? You don't even like cats. Yeah, well, I like him. And I have one more favor to ask of you, Mr. Lee. Now, we don't see what the favor he asked is, but we find out later. We found out later. I got a spoiler for this. Should I tell you? I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Should I tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He transfers $60 million of real estate to Gia's name without her knowing. Dang. I know. And he pulls out the authentic necklace and he wonders when he'll be able to give it to her. And the big day for Gia is finally here. The day of meeting the family. The day she formally meets Michael's parents. Everyone is anxious. They can't sit still. Everything's got to be perfect. Michael's mom is just a bigger bitch than usual because she's got all these emotions and nerves. She's in the apartment yelling at her husband about his lack of style. Is it your wedding? You just wear what I pick for you. This is very expensive. It's authentic. Authentic. Do you know? (laughs) Bro, <laughs> there's the amount of authentic I've heard. Yeah. Who cares if it's expensive? The color sucks and the shape is weird, honey. Your eyes are tasteless. Should I just gouge them out? They're so useless. Michael walks to them screaming. He's still in his PJs. Why are you guys arguing so early? Amma! Amma, are you going early to wait for her? Are you insane, my son? I'm going to be 30 minutes late. She must wait if she wants my precious boy. It pisses me off that a good for nothing brat is stealing you away from me. But mom, you're getting me a house, right? Once I get married. Have you started looking? What's the budget like? Because you're going to buy me a house, right? That's what you said. When I get married, you'll buy me a house. Michael's mom just ignores him and keeps flipping out at her husband. But Michael feels a buzz from his phone and it's Stacy. I'm in front of your house. Come out. Michael's frantic. He runs down the stairs and out to the front, hoping Stacy doesn't have any more surprises for him today. And nope, she's just out there waiting in all white. And she ushers him over with her little pointer finger like this. And he's freaking out. Damn, what the hell? What are you doing here? Isn't it the family meeting today? What? Yeah, well, don't be scared. She walks up closer to him. Because I know you're mine. And she starts grabbing his testes right there in the middle whoa, of the street. Whoa, whoa, chill. Yeah, I chill. know. Like literally plucking them around like they're tangerines. Uh, oh. 
Oh, what on earth are you doing? What? I'm just checking to see how my man's doing. I have about 10 minutes. Well, I, I don't finish in 10 minutes. She slaps him on the booty and she looks like she's about to walk away. Get going. You're going to be late. Go and introduce Gia to your parents. Before she finally walks off, she lets go of his arm and she turns back to look him in the eyes and she's got something planned and Michael knows it, but it would take generations to figure out what that limited brain cell he possesses can put two and two together. So he just keeps it moving. Everyone starts making their way to LB's restaurant and LB is setting the table himself because it's such an important day. You know, it's almost like he's letting go of Gia in this moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're all in their feels. Anyway, Michael's the first one there. Hello, I'm sorry. I'm like, Wait, nobody's here yet? What the hell? He immediately picks up his phone and calls Gia. He doesn't even wait for her to speak. He's screaming into the phone. Where are you? How could you be late? My parents are both here, but you're not here. Today is so important. You're f***ing it up. I'm at the door. What took you so long? Hurry up. But before Gia makes it, Michael sees his parents walk down the hallway. Oh, ma! He's dying inside, knowing this is going to be ruined if his mom walks in and sees Gia not there. She's not here yet? Ah, uh, she she is. She went to the restroom. But before they can all get to sitting down, Gia walks in in the most unhinged way possible. She's wearing head to toe black leather, black leather with black fishnet <laughs> stockings. She's got knee high leather heels on and she's got this faux fur cropped coat that hangs off of one shoulder. Like, you know, the birds of a uh, birds of prey, the Margot Robbie yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. crazy yeah, jacket. Yeah. It's like that, but all black. She's like Halloween costume. Yeah, like <laughs> sexy dominatrix <laughs> Halloween costume. Oh She's got God. long, dangly diamond earrings, all perfectly combined with thick black smoky eye and her new expensive pink Bobo Chanel purse. She struts in <laughs> and she pretends like she's not even dressed like she's going to the club afterwards. Michael and his parents just dropped, horrified. <laughs> I thought I was late, but I guess I'm on time. Mother, father, it's nice to finally meet you. <gasps> Wait, oh my God, aren't you from the cooking class? So you're Michael's mother. Oh my God. Uh, uh, At this point, what? They all sit down. I don't know how they actually get to sitting down. And Michael's mom is just starting the conversation strong. I heard your parents passed away early. You must lack a lot of home discipline then. No, my father passed away when I was 23. I received enough home discipline. Of course, since my mom left the house when I was 14, I didn't get enough of the maternal influence. But I guess that's a good thing. She's having an affair. Michael and his mom spit out their drinks. Did she really just say that? Because again, Korean tradition, remember? Korean traditional conservative culture, remember? Gia hands Michael a napkin, but his mom holds out her hand thinking Gia's going to offer one too. But Gia suddenly realizes how pretty the light fixtures are and is just <laughs> analyzing them. Like, la, la, la. Awkward, okay? Michael's mom just flips her wrist around and acts like she's stretching her arm and grabs a napkin <sighs> for herself. I was curious as to who Michael would bring home, and he brought quite the woman. Mom, Gia's a great girl. She's really nice. She won't make you work at all. I'm sure of it. Michael quietly asks Gia. What's with the eagle wings? What happened to all the clothes I bought you? You, you bought her clothes? Well, no, mom, not these, no. Oh, I'll wear the clothes on a special occasion, even more special than today. But I brought the bag. She raises it up for all of them to see. His mom is in pure disbelief, like her son has the fucking audacity. Mother, thank you for raising him so well. To celebrate joining his family from the top of my head to the tip of my toes, he bought me everything I wanted. He's so sweet. He only ever bought me red pajamas with his first paycheck. Seriously? Uh, That's not right, Michael. That's not right. The food starts heading out to their tables and his mother is just placing extra food on Michael's plate like a freaking toddler. I love you, mom. She's not having it. She turns to Gia and starts her speech. I'll just say this because I'm an honest person. I do not like you. I never thought of accepting a woman like you into our family. You didn't learn much with no parents, but it's okay as long as you're willing to learn from me now on. You're willing, right, to learn? Yes, of course. Michael seems very pleased. Okay, and I'm actually not that uptight. Sexism is wrong. You're both equally precious. However, that's only in society. Things are different in the home. Michael's like, right. Gia just nods, but obviously doesn't agree. Family life depends on how the woman does. Feed your man and keep your house clean. Raise your child well. Yes, mother, I can do it. 
Men lose energy if they have to be in the kitchen. No matter how much they deny it, this is a known fact all around the world. That's why I'm learning to cook so I can cook for Michael. You must feed him breakfast. Nothing ridiculous like bread or cereal. Cook him soup or stew with rice. Yes, I understand. Michael has just eaten this up. He's like, yeah, mommy, you tell her. Okay, you tell her what I need. (sighs) And as for kids, how about three or four? Have as many as you can. That sounds good. I didn't have siblings growing up, so I was quite lonely. I like that. I'll call you when I have time. I can take you to the doctor. There are so many uteruses in bad shape these days. I'll take a look and see what the doctor says. I mean, as long as you took care of yourself and didn't meet too many people, there's no reason to say no, right? Let's do a health checkup soon. The way she says it is like... Wait, wait, wait. She's trying to do a... Like a uterus checkup to make sure she can have kids and stuff and her uterus Jeez, is healthy. Yeah. Chill out. It's very disturbing. Gia is starting to lose her patience at this point, but she holds on for a little bit longer. And Michael's mom continues. I haven't been able to see my ancestors and it's bothered me for a while. Since we have a new family member coming in, you can go to the graves with me. Let's revive ancestral rites. Red, right, white, left. Ugh, you wouldn't know these things. I'll teach you, so don't worry. But just keep it in mind. Treat your elders with care and be obedient to your husband. Raise children properly. And keeping your career after a marriage is a good thing. I will approve of it. Oh, wait, mother, why would I work? Immediately, Michael's mom's smile shifts to hatred. Michael starts getting worried too. Are you saying you're going to quit, honey? I didn't want to. I was never considering it. But after listening to everything that your mom said, I mean, I think so. No. The mother-in-law is screaming. No, no. Do you know how expensive kids are? How could you just play at home? Mother, I wouldn't be playing. To treat you with care, serve Michael, and raise my children properly. Oh, man, I don't even think 24 hours in a day would do it. Also, it's not red on the right and white on the left. It's red on the east, white on the west. (laughs) What? The ancestral rites? I did one for my father every year on my own, so I have no objections to starting that with you. (sighs) That is why home discipline is so important. That is not the case with customs. Daughters aren't supposed to do ancestral rites. Your father probably thinks it's his fault to have just a daughter. That is why everybody wants a son. There is a reason for that. Here's what I don't understand, Ajima. She say Ajima? Yeah, Gia just flipped a switch. Here's what I don't understand, lady. Ajuma, lady? Are you, are you a judge, lady? Because why are you judging my dad? Michael looks panicked. Gee, are you crazy? How dare you talk to me like that? Huh? How dare you? Michael's mom is freaking out. She looks like she's about to punch Gia in the face. Shut up. Don't say anything. Lady, are you done? Gia gets up and slams her fist on the table. The wedding is off. That makes us strangers. So to me, you are just a lady, an ajuma. She leans in. Lady, wake up. Your son isn't that great. And even if he was, then you should know someone else's child is just as precious. Listen carefully. It's not you. It was me that's calling off this wedding. Got it? (laughs) Michael's like, Gia, are you crazy? Michael's mom's jaw is dropped. She's left speechless. Michael stands up with Gia to try and stop her from leaving, but she pushes him down with her pink Bobo Chanel bag. She storms the fork out, and Michael's chasing after her. They get outside the restaurant, and LB is walking towards her across the grass, and Michael catches up with Gia, and before she gets too far, he grabs her by the wrist. His mom and dad have also run out, but they're, like, staying far behind, just watching. What are you doing? What do you think? I'm breaking up with you. What? Breaking up with me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, let's uh, never see each other ever again. She turns her back to start walking away, but Michael decides to grab her shoulder, but she has been practicing for this exact moment. She uses Michael's own movements against him, flips him over his shoulder, and slams him onto the ground. That's the judo technique that Richard had taught her. He literally does a front flip over her body and onto the dirt. In front of his parents. Yeah. Does she just want to embarrass him? Yeah. And (laughs) Gia finally gets her moment of redemption with Michael. 17 years, two lifetimes of dating this piece of shit is finally done. And she gets to see everything unravel now because her engagement is over. 
I really try to be health conscious, but these days I never know what sources I can trust. Like maybe that's on me for getting my information on TikTok, but there's so many trending diets and they're constantly changing. Like one week, eggs are bad for you and you need to be plant-based. Next week, bread is bad and you need to go keto and it's just overwhelming. And I almost always end up tired and hungry. I mean, I'm doing a diet to be healthier. So why do I end up feeling worse about myself? If you can relate to drinking green juices for breakfast and then doing cardio because someone on TikTok told you to, and then not eating donuts when you really crave it, maybe it's time for a new approach because there is a better way and a more sustainable way to reach your health and weight loss goals. And that's the Row Body program. Row Body will support you through every step of your health and weight loss journey. They're already working with over 200,000 people and they have helped individuals lose 15 to 20% of their weight in just one year. And the best part is there's no crash dieting, there's no rebound weight gain, and these people are keeping the weight off. Not only will you get access to health experts who will help you create a sustainable weight loss plan, but if you need additional help, Roe also provides access to the most popular weight loss shots on the market. If eligible, your healthy weight loss plan will be paired with weekly medications to help you reach your goals faster. The best part about Roe is how convenient it is. You don't need to schedule any appointments or even leave your house. You can sign up online from the comfort of your own home. So if you want real results, don't get swept up in the trends. With Roe, average weight loss is 15 to 20% in one year with healthy lifestyle changes. BMI and other eligibility criteria apply. Go to roe.co slash baking sign up today and you'll pay just 99 dollars for your first month and 145 dollars a month after that medication costs are separate that's ro.co slash baking michael gets home and throws another tempe tantrum he slams his blazer on the table and is just screaming at the top of his lungs gia that bitch gia michael's mom doesn't even think michael got enough from gia so they come home and she smacks the living shit out of him what was that for mom ow it hurts this is all your fault why are you throwing a tantrum stop acting like a child what did i do he's trying to run away but she's chasing him in circles around the coffee table and foaming at the mouth are you serious right now how could you bring such a shameless brat to our family she's normally nice she must have been possessed i don't know goodness you just got flipped by a woman you still run your mouth you see one you've seen it all i told you home discipline was important countless times this happened because you didn't listen to me (sighs) he walks out of the apartment building rubbing his now freshly beaten behind and he says to himself damn it she doesn't know anything gia went crazy what the fuck does she expect me (sighs) gia king that mother is dead so he heads over to gia's apartment and is pounding on the door gia come out do you think i just let it go i've been too easy on you you need to know your place and stop messing around i know you're inside of there come out right now but when the door opens there is a burly ass man the man looks like he could fling michael down the hallway with a little tick. yeah he looks like he's been casted for the wrong show it looks like he applied for physical 100 and accidentally ended up here for some reason he's got a black tank top on that just says gym yeah and he's got a 40 pound dumbbell in one hand and he's like cupping yeah he's just doing a lot what what the hell what sort of fire yells like this in front of someone's door wait a second is this the right number Are, are you dia's brother i didn't know she had siblings what are you talking about right now oh um hello sir yes um this is where my girlfriend lives i think that i was mistaken Girlfriend? Well, I know the last tenant was a woman. Wait, the last tenant? Michael's brain cells need a second to put this information together. Remember, Gia was jotting things down on her notepad? She was moving. Yeah. She moved right before she called off the engagement. She was expecting this. She moved into a gated compound, the same one Richard lives in. Because Richard owns that unit and she's paying him rent. She's probably paying him like a dollar a month. Uh, Yeah. Hannah and Richard are helping her move into the place and helping her unpack. Hello, Miss King. What are you wearing? What is this leather look? Was I bad? Are you punishing me? Gia looks over at Richard and he's trying to keep his cool, trying not to notice Gia in all the hot gear. Um, uh, He's just staring at the walls. The walls are particularly interesting that day. No, I uh, I had something to refund, so that's why. Refunds are notoriously hard in South Korea, by the way, so that's why. Give me something. Oh. So she's like, she wanted to look like a bad bitch so that the sales associate would just be like, you know what, let's just give her the refund. I'm not trying to do this today. Oh, I thought she was trying to like seduce them for no, a refund. No, no. Then oh. the outfit's perfect. Was it a success? 
Richard is still glancing away and they both walk in um, and his hands are full of toilet paper, laundry detergent and a bouquet of flowers. This is his first time doing a housewarming. So I told him to buy tissues and detergent as gifts. I didn't tell him about the flowers, though. Well, I love flowers. Wait, so does the sister know that they're into each other? No. Uh. So they start helping her unpack. And uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's like, so- imagine your brother is a chebel son. And then she goes, hey, go get some toilet paper yeah. for this random employee as a housewarming gift. Because that's Hannah's best friend. Okay, but still, yeah. you don't ask your Chebo CEO brother to buy yeah. toilet paper. And Hannah's like, and why here of all places, Gia, though? Your boss lives in the building. It'll be so uncomfortable. Gia's like such a master actress playing it off like it's just all a coincidence. And uh, Hannah walks away for a second and Gia's unpacking books on the top shelf. But Richard sees her barely reaching the top shelf. He goes over to help. Oh. And Hannah sees her brother fallen in love. Okay, obviously. So she has to address this. When they leave the apartment, she walks into the elevator. And when the doors finally close, even though you were born into a life where you can't live your own way, I didn't think a business marriage was right. So when you called off the wedding with Yura, I was glad. But is there another reason you called off the engagement with Yura? In classic older sibling fashion, Richard completely ignores her. Doesn't even acknowledge the fact that she was just talking a second ago. But Hannah needs to know. She follows him into the apartment. I mean, by any chance, if you have feelings for someone who's very important to me, what are you worried about, Hannah? You think I'm going to do something to Gia? Well, what would you even do? She's getting married. Then, okay, go home now. He slams his bedroom door behind him, but Richard feels, I don't know, maybe a little bad. So he opens the door again and walks out. Nothing's going on and I'm not going to do anything. She's a good person, so I just want to help. Also, I'm grateful that she's nice to you. Are you happy now? Go home. And then he slams the door shut again. But Hannah's not buying it. She's skeptical. I've never seen him like that. Michael is also having a like a slamming fit, but for different reasons. He just had one of the worst weekends of his entire freaking life. He found he found out that his stocks are void. His girlfriend's shopping spree bled him dry and she embarrassed him in front of his parents, broke up with him. I mean, his life is unhinged. He did it. He slams his briefcase down onto his cubicle. Mr. Park, what's wrong? It's Mrs. Yang. Michael spots Gia walking into the office and he's ready to brawl. They start walking towards each other like they're about to have a showdown. Hey, Gia, you. And before he can finish, her hand is already in midair and she slaps him across the face in front of the whole office. He's shocked. Are you insane? She slaps him even harder. (laughs) Why are you hitting me, you f***? She slaps him again and he raises his arm to slap her back. But before he can swing, Richard's hand is already gripping his wrist and forces his arm behind him. That's enough from both of you. Michael tries to wiggle away. You did nothing when she hit me. Why are you so unfair? (laughs) Gia says very loudly so everyone can hear. Did you share your love with two women because you like being fair? Everyone is so shocked. Mrs. Yang gets up to help the bestie while Richard holds Michael back. Mrs. Yang is like, Gia, let's, let's go. But Gia's like, no, just a minute, Mrs. Yang. I have more to say to the cheater. Gia goes into her purse and pulls out a red lacy thong and shoves them in Michael's face. And the entire office is... (gasps) (laughs) She plops the underwear onto the top of Michael's head and says, whose are these? I found them in your car. Michael is seeing all the colors of the rainbow right now. Right before the family dinner, turns out Stacy did end up finishing in 10 minutes in his car. Yeah. Ah. He shoves the panties into his pocket, scrambling. How could you go through my car? How dare you yell at me, you cheater? Gia grabs her engagement ring and slides it off. And Michael flinches because he thinks that she's going to hit him. So she scoffs and instead she chucks it across the room. It falls on the floor and it shatters into a million pieces, proving to everybody it's not even a real diamond. Bro, this is freaking crazy. Imagine this happening in real life. Uh, Bro, I would do a whole (laughs) MM on it. (laughs) She she took off his ring. And so it good. shatters. Oh my god! And it shatters. He said he's just narrating what he sees cinematically. Oh. If this is office drama, Michael's work life is pretty much over right now. Everyone is talking, messaging, spreading the word. Did you hear about Michael Park? He cheated. He cheated on Gia Kang. You know, Michael from marketing. He cheated, and they did it in a car. His mistress, a car. Big news. I can't even freaking believe it. Rumor has it it's spreading to HR. 
huge. Oh yeah, and Stacy was there doing all of this. She's just trying to blend into the wall and she's contemplating, was I wearing red undies that day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also timing, guys, because remember manager Kim, the asshole manager? I thought he got fired, but no, he was just on paid leave and now he's back. He thought everyone would be excited to see his funky hairline, but they glance over at him when he makes his grand entrance and then goes back to typing and spreading the gossip. Uh. Yeah. Meanwhile, at the rooftop, Michael is slumped over on the steps, grabbing another cigarette. So that's why she did that to my mom. What do I do? Girls like her, terrifying. He hears the unmistakable clomping of high heels behind him and turns around to yell at Stacy. Hey, you can't even manage your own panties. Those panties aren't mine. What? Those aren't yours? but I only did it with you in the car. If they're not yours, why are they there? What the hell is going on? (laughs) Well, then what happened? Whose are they? What are you saying, dad? He starts slamming shit on the ground and contemplating. This makes no sense. Gia didn't get in my car afterwards. How did she find them? You know what? I'm going to ask her. Michael gets up to try and ask Gia his dumbest question alive, but Stacy stops him. Ask where she found it. That's not going to change the fact that you cheated. Michael starts throwing a little temper tantrum again. Stop screaming, Michael. You just fell for a measly romance. It's not right, but it happens. People change. And she should have acted right to prevent you from cheating. Richard is behind the wall listening to them act like total idiots. Meanwhile, Gia is sitting in the break room trying to hide her smile. And everybody is just trying to comfort her. Mrs. Yang, uh, Hannah. And she thinks to herself, I knew he'd take the bait. They don't belong to Stacy, but I chose the panties that he would like. Red. Mrs. Yang is like, are you okay, Gia? I'm so sorry. You should have at least told us. I can't imagine how upset you've been. Anyways, do you know who he was cheating with? Gia looks at him like she has her suspicions, but instead she walks off and heads down the hallway where she passes by manager Kim. Look who it is, the great Gia who does all the company's work herself. They got beef, remember? They got major beef. Gia just gives him a smirk and walks away. And he starts trying to chase after her and kick her. He has to be restrained by another staff member. Mr. Kim, Mr. Kim, you're going to get in trouble. That little, look at how she acts. That's why men cheat on her. I can't believe her. For men, it's important what kind of woman they meet, you know? Manager Kim walks outside to the rooftop to get some fresh air. And it looks like he's using his very first day back at work to flex whatever's left of his former glory and not much else. Not that he ever worked to begin with, but he walks out to Stacy talking to Michael and he's eavesdropping. Stacy is cupping Michael's face and trying to console him. Many people get married and divorced these days. You just followed your heart, so don't worry about it. We can't waver. But even though Stacy is really trying to give him a sincere moment, Michael honestly hates her guts. He grabs her hands, shoves them off his face. It seems like you're mistaken right now, Stacy. You are not marriage material. Gia King graduated from Korea University. She saved quite a bit of money and is very self-sufficient. What about you, huh? What else do you have besides being pretty? What do you have? That we slept together? Sure, it's great, but let's be realistic. I'm not in my 20s. I can't marry you. Know your place. Bro, the amount of... <laughs> dumbness in the statement i <laughs> manager kim witnesses all of it and it's about to go down because remember manager kim would die for this girl stacy he has this whole idea in his head that she's gonna have his baby i mean man wants to repopulate all of south korea with stacy population of south korea is gonna go back up birth rate back up country no problems yeah hey you better Manager Kim launches himself at Michael with his fist in the air, but Michael swings back and they get into like a really weird tussle. It's like a whole thing. Long story short, it's causing so much commotion that all the coworkers are immediately putting the puzzle pieces together. Oh yeah. So the woman Mr. Park cheated on is with Stacy, right? Gia's best friend. Oh my God, it's a freaking jungle. What's happening at this workplace? And they've been best friends since middle school? Gia got her this job. That is so crazy. Poor Gia. The gossip is going fast, and even Stacy overhears her coworkers talking smack about her in the break room. Everyone is getting together to talk about Gia Michael Stacy scandal. They even start referring Michael to Panty Park. Yeah, y'all, they're sending <sighs> emails, like company emails about it. Gia is reading through all of these threads after work because Girlie keeps her personal business outside of office hours. Slay, corporate queen. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like a whole thing. But before she really opens up all the email threads, she gets a call from Stacy. Stacy's just texting her nonstop. Gia, did you move? I think we need to talk. I'm in front of your place. You don't believe what everyone is saying, do you? You have to believe me. 
Gia doesn't respond. She's way too exhausted. So she gets to work the next morning, but immediately gets stopped by another teammate. Apparently, something went wrong with the tasting event. Remember the one that Michael and Stacy did? No. So Gia and Mrs. Yang, they head to the conference room to check the footage. They immediately pull up the paperwork to see who was, you know, fronting the tasting event. And on the first page, Stacy and Michael. Not only that, they find out that Michael tried to cover up the customer's allergy situation and hid it from the company. Because, you know, we don't know what really happened. Well, we do know what happened. They're too busy doing it in the storage room of the supermarket. Now the company's taking a hit. Mrs. Yang immediately, she's turning into a girl boss slowly, immediately heads to his desk, confronts him. Oh my God, how could you do this? Even if there was an incident, why cover it up? Pardon me? What? Joe Mart, I heard about the allergen sign issue. Why didn't you report it? Michael looks over at Gia and Gia's acting like she's super typey typey on the computer, super busy. Mrs. Yang is getting fed up. Instead of apologizing to Joe Mart, you yelled and said it was Joe Mart's mistake? Yes, but it's very true. While we were away for just a second, their employees started the tasting event without our approval. We? Both of you? Why would both you and Stacy be away for a second? Well, Gia pops in. Mr. Park and Mrs. Zhang were in charge, right? Miss Gia knows what she's doing. Whispers start flying again. Hannah pretends to cough while she mutters, <coughs> son of a bitch. Stacy can't help herself. She sees everyone typing up their work chat logs again and she jumps from her office chair and says, no, what are you all insinuating? Gia. Gia gives her the look that's telling everybody, oh yeah, Stacy's the one that forked her fiance. And all the emails start going rapid fire. Girlfriend's best friend, cheater. They did it during work hours. They did it during a, like a show and tell for work. The situation is getting so out of hand. Mr. Lee, the right hand chairman or whatever, calls Michael into his office and states that he's now filtering all of the company emails. The situation in marketing is being shared through company emails. So I've banned the words Mr. Park, Bermuda Park and Michael Park and oh, right, uh, Panties Park. What's Bermuda Park? Like a... I don't know. Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle. Triangle. Dang. That was really good. <sighs> I guess I can avoid being talked about at work then. That's good. However, these protective measures will only be valid if you accept being transferred to a different department. To a different department? So after Michael gets drilled, I mean, yeah, Stacy gets into the trenches. It's impossible to make you a full-time employee now, Stacy. The contract isn't up yet, but the company is going to let you go after today. Stacy clenches her fist on the edge of the skirt and Stacy's eyes are twitching. She's literally looking homicidal. When she gets out of the office, she goes into the women's break room and she keeps making phone call after phone call to Gia and she's just, she's literally losing her mind. Then she decides she's gonna text Gia, but instead she decides to write something. She's got a new idea. She grabs a pen and paper and starts scribbling. Meanwhile, manager Kim is being demoted to Mr. Kim on the first day he's back. And like all the while this is happening, Mrs. Yang and Mr. Lee is like, they're, they be making like a storage room love line, but like really stoic. So Mrs. Yang just tells Mr. Lee that instead of promoting her to manager, he should be promoting Gia Kang because Gia is the one that did all of the meal kit stuff from start to finish. And he's like, you know, you really need to stop doing this. You really need to stop losing out on opportunities because you're just getting stepped on. You're getting used. And she basically says, I'd rather get used than be the one using people. And he kind of like low key respects her for it. They're, I don't know. They got some stuff going on. I don't know what's going on, but there's tension for sure. Now, anyway, Mrs. Yang is sitting with Gia in the break room when Hannah walks in. Mrs. Yang, Gia, I think you should all come downstairs. Gia runs downstairs to the company lobby and she hears someone screaming her name like it's some sort of war cry. And it's Mr. and Mrs. Go. Like, you know, the guy that almost died because Stacy and Michael were horny, the one that ate the pine nuts. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a whole crowd of employees just standing around them and bodyguards at the reception area. And Mr. Go is screaming and waving his phone around. Gia can come out. Why did you block me on Instagram? I almost died because of you. Who's Gia Kang? Why would she say this? I want to see what she, does she think she knows us? What is she talking about? She revealed her name. Doesn't that mean she's so confident? They're frantic. They're yelling at the front desk, but Gia walks right up to them. Hello, I'm Gia Kang from Marketing Team One. You're Gia Kang? Mrs. Go slaps Gia across the face and everybody gasps. Michael is there too. And so is Stacy with her little box of stuff because she just got fired. Mr. Oh. Kim gives a little, yes. So they're holding a phone with a statement that she allegedly made on Instagram. 
Hey, you think we pretended to be dying because we wanted to get free things from you and Kay? Do you think allergies are some sort of joke? You people messed up, but we let it go. My husband almost died. And this is what you think of him? I'm sorry, ma'am, but may I see your phone? They have a picture open to a handwritten letter on Instagram from an account called Kang Ji Won, her name. But it's not, it's not her account. The handwritten note that was posted, it looks like a notes apology, but it reads, Hello, I'm Jia Kang, the person involved in the scandal at UNK. I'm trembling, so I'll just put this simply. First, the triangle relationship is completely false. It's true that the man I was about to marry fell for my friend. However, my friend didn't reciprocate his feelings. She's such an attractive woman, so I'm trying to accept it as the unavoidable. And the incident at Joe Mart was a typical case where the problematic consumers schemed to get freebies. They ate it without checking the ingredients. It can't happen to those with serious allergies. My friend is innocent. It pains me that she's being blamed for all of this. Love, Gia Kang. Is this not the dumbest letter in the freaking world? Yeah. And Gia's like, wow. Like, Stacy is willing to stoop so low. Her hands are trembling with rage, but she finally gets the words out. I didn't write this, but this is my handwriting. I know someone who has the same handwriting as me. Everyone was like, huh? Hannah and Mrs. Yang are back in Bestia, up, but nobody else is. Gia does a full 180. Stacy, stop. And she stomps her way over to Stacy. I'm not going to let it go this time. You did it. So now you fix it. She grabs Stacy by the neck, drags her over to the Mr. and Mrs. Go, throws her onto the floor in front of them. Wait, Gia, I, what are you doing? Don't do this. Don't forget that I know as much about you as you know about me. Gia takes out Stacy's phone and all it takes is one try to get through her password, log into Instagram, and sure enough, open on the app is Stacy logged into an anonymous account under Jay Kang, the one that posted that letter. She hands the phone over to Mr. and Mrs. Go. As a UNK employee, I'm very sorry about the incident prior. However, you deserve an apology from the right person. They look at Stacy. Honey, she's that woman, the one that was with the guy, Mr. Park, that day that you almost died. Stacy's still on the ground. I mean, at this point, she could just dig herself a grave. Seriously, like the shit between Michael and Stacy have unraveled in record time at UNK. It's crazy. They're all standing there whispering. The coworkers are like, so it was a frame up. So she stole her man and used her to defend herself because no one would believe her. Stacy can hear all of them. She can see her life going down the drain and she stays to readjust herself on her knees. I'm very sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Go. The situation, it was just moving in such a bad direction. I needed an excuse, but I crossed the line. I wasn't trying to insult you too. You must be very offended, but I didn't think that far. It's all my fault and I was very wrong. I'm so sorry. Miss Go gives Gia a genuine apology and Gia's like, yeah, no biggie girly. But they roll their eyes when they look over at Stacy, who's still on her knees begging. I felt like I was going insane. I know I shouldn't have, but I was so emotional these days. And I just, I know I'm a terrible person, but I thought I might end up doing something I'd regret. And that's why I posted that. Stacy looks over at Gia. Gia, I'm really sorry. Can you please forgive me? I can't live without you right now. Stacy's got tears in her eyes. She starts inching closer and closer to Gia, trying to grab onto her hand. And Gia's just looking straight forward, refusing to make eye contact. Not today. But Stacy grabs her hand. Gia looks down in a moment of pity and Stacy says, I'm pregnant. What? <sighs> the heart attacks are coming. Mr. Kim feels like his life is over because that was supposed to be his fantasy baby mother. <laughs> Michael literally falls on the floor and he's holding his chest. He's being dramatic and the whole office is having a meltdown. Michael runs out of the building and finds himself drowning in soju on the street vendor that he used to love taking Gia to. And it's like a whole thing. Like he's really upset about this. <laughs> Not only that, he's got three loan sharks coming for him for all the money that he's indebted to. <sighs> Anyway, he gets kidnapped on his way home. <laughs> <laughs> he gets kidnapped on his way home, okay? He wakes up. He's been taken completely hostage. Ropes are restraining him on his chest, wrist, and ankles. There's a brown paper bag over his head. One of the men snatched the bag from over his head, and he sees that he's been taken to the back of some sort of abandoned warehouse. Who are you punks, huh? What do you think you're doing to me? Punks? Did you just call me a punk? Is it because I look so young? Oh, yeah, you do look young. So the punks are friendly. They're talking to each other, right? I do look young. By the way, it's pretty obvious who these two punks are. They're Richard's college friends, Sam and Fred. Yeah. 
Wait. Richard asked them to scare the shit out of Michael. And it's obvious that they've never done this before. It's oh like comical. God. It's very comical. Sam and Fred look awkward more than anything. Fred even put on a leather jacket, a gold chain over his posh little academic sweater to really like give the vibes. But like, it's so unserious. One of them has a bat with nails in it. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Like a, like a prop weapon? Yes. Uh, Sam bangs his hammer on the metal crate near him to shut Michael's ass up, but it spooks Fred just as much as it spooks Michael. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm just sorry. I just meant like something bad will happen to you guys, sir. By any chance, where are you from? Are you from Snake Loans or is it Viper Financial? <laughs> uh, the two guys look at each other and they immediately know what to do. Ah, you borrowed from Snake too? You know, they don't hit people like we do. They like to cut people. C cut, cut people? Fred moves his hammer over to his knees, wrists to show him exactly where they chop him up. And he, it, Michael looks like he's ready to sell his mom. <sighs> Take her. I don't need her anymore. And the whole point of this whole kidnapping thing is just to make sure that Michael needs that money. He needs money, so he needs to get married. And guess who he cannot marry? Gia. So who's his next best bet? Get bet. Bet. Bruh. <sighs> Who? Wait, 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 wait. This kidnap thing is to make him marry someone? Yes. Why? Because he knows that his mom is going to buy him a house when he gets married. What? And he <sighs> needs money. This is the easiest way. Some, such a dumb plan. Okay. Exactly. So afterwards, he asks his mom. He confirms that she's going to buy him a house when they get married. She gives him like a semi-confirmation. He goes to Stacy and is like, you need to marry me, babes. She's really upset. She's like, I thought you said I was nothing but pretty. And he's like, no, no, no. You and me, he gives the same speech. Okay. Shall we get married? We'll be a better family tomorrow than we are now. I <laughs> promise. And Stacy really thinks she's out here about to live her main character moment. Meanwhile, our queen Gia is too busy girl bossing to even think about Stacy right now. She's out to dinner with Hannah and Mrs. Yang to celebrate the fact that they got their meal kit project back on track and they even pop a bottle of champagne. And it looks like everybody's been busy cleaning up messes, especially Grandpa Yu. Mr. Lee heads over to bring him an incident report for Michael and Stacy's vile indecencies. So the problem wasn't Gia King, but her fiance and her friend? Yes, sir. But the employee is pregnant, so the customers decided to let it go. HR took action on the two employees, and Miss King was right about the meal kit case as well. It's common for managers to steal proposals. So Miss King was the victim. I need to meet her. Mr. Lee straight up fetches Gia, just like that, escorts her to the mansion. I mean, obviously, Grandpa Yu did not bring Gia to his family estate just to talk to her about business. Like, he knows. He knows his grandson is down bad for her. I heard you went through a lot recently. Gia sitting on the couch. I've decided to face the obstacles that are bound to happen. I guess there are many difficult people around you. No, there aren't that many, but there are some tough ones. She's not intimidated or anything? No. <laughs> Am I one of the tough ones? I believe so. Yes. What are you going to do from now on? At that point, Daddy Richard runs in because he just heard that Gia was there and he obviously can't breathe without a certain concentration of Gia particles in the air. And Richard screams, Grandfather! Oh my goodness. You're scaring my guest, Richard. Richard steals her away from Grandpa and takes her outside to talk. And they're basically hiking this property. That's how big it is. The chairman didn't say much, so you don't have to worry too much. I'll make sure that this never happens again, Gia. I'm very sorry. Why would you be sorry? Anyway, it was amazing that I could even meet him in person. I guess that he wasn't as difficult as I thought he'd be. Anyways, Gia's like, I just told him the truth. That my bosses stole my proposal and maybe I should have just let it slide. But I didn't. And I don't regret it now. That's an answer my grandfather would like. And he brought up my private life first. He said that I shouldn't blame my foot for stepping on crap. So Michael and Stacy are going to marry soon. You can start over, Gia. Right, well, I'll feel relieved once they actually decide to get married. They'll do it. There's no other way for Michael to get money. What do you mean? I checked his financial situation. His stock credit is bad. He took out loans. He's under pressure to pay. He's already received his severance pay, and he was demoted due to the recent incident, so his salary was cut. How did you check all of that? Remember what I said? I used to only do what was right. It's not true. My grandfather knew that I just, I didn't want anything. Do you want to 
shoot a gun bro that escalated so quick but like remember how he was shooting shotguns in his grandfather's backyard so that's what they do and they have like a cute little moment so instead of golfing or teaching someone how to play pool he's teaching them how to shoot i don't know in the k-drama it somehow worked yeah, of course. Yeah, it worked. It, it anything was, works in case. Yeah, drama. exactly. Meanwhile, Stacy is not reborn into a second life with the Tebar package pre installed. So she actually has to hustle. Stacy is hustling. She's looking for secondhand positive pregnancy tests and sonograms on the underground secondhand pregnancy market. Like it's giving fakeababy.com. Why? Because she's not actually pregnant. Why does that matter? Because she needs to marry Michael. She's got nothing and nobody she's left. Still into Michael? Yeah. Wow. Meanwhile, Ju Gia gets back to her new apartment and has some girly time with Hannah. And of course, she's like feeding the girl and it's Christmas Day. And at that moment, LB calls and Hannah gets the phone, throws it at Gia and already accepts it because she's like, you can't be spending Christmas with me. You got to do something. And LB is like, OK, fine. Let me take you on a date. So they end up going on a date. Oh. They end up going rollerblading around the town. It's like a thing. I mean, it's a beautiful place. Meanwhile, Hannah doesn't go with them and she uses the excuse that she has plans for Christmas, but she doesn't. She just plops down on Richard's couch, very upset, okay? She's bummed because her only plan now is to spend Christmas with her crusty brother. Oh, it's Christmas and I have no plans. At least they look good together. She stops her little moment to check up on Richard and this man is scooping angry bites from a bucket of ice cream. A bucket. This man is wrecked. Oh, you're eating ice cream? Jeez, you look human for once. Give me some. Richard doesn't even respond. He's gripping the spoon like a caveman, pushing through gulps of ice cream at a time. What? You told me to help them get closer. I did such a great job, so why do you look upset? Does he seem like a decent guy to you? Yes, he may be kind of boring, but he's comfortable. He's handsome and stable. Miss Kang acts strong, but she has anxiety. And most importantly, there's love pouring from his eyes. Richard cannot take this. It's too much. He slams his spoon down aggressively on the table, grabs the ice cream tub over to the knives. What? what why do your actions and your words not match? You said nothing was going on with her. You said to set her up with a decent guy, and that's what I did. Richard turns around and he's just chomping away like he's hacking into that bucket of ice cream. He walks over to Hannah with the half bucket. Literally, he cut into the bucket. I don't know how. Yeah. Yeah. He slices it into half. Yeah. And then just stabs a spoon on top. It, eat it like this. We love our Hungry King because she doesn't even second guess it. She takes it without hesitation. I mean, she should meet a decent guy soon. I think she dreams of spending Christmas with family at home. Twinkling lights and gifts under the tree. A cake and a music box. Maybe some Santa hats and stockings. Now that's something Richard can work with. Meanwhile, Gia and LB are at the snow park, the ice skating rink. And they're like on a proper date. They're holding hands. They're ice skating around. But Gia can't help but think about Richard. The whole time. Man, poor dude, you know. Yeah. And at the end of the night, LB walks her back towards the gates of her complex. And you know damn well he's trying to get a little smooch -a rooney to close out the perfect night. <sighs> but she tells him, thank you for being a good friend. But it's like not done in a weird friend zoning way. It's done in a very clean, both mutually accepted way. And, you know, LB knows what she means she made her choice it's richard but he's not even upset he's just a little sad and they both are smiling but crying at the same time i'm thankful to you gia my first love and he holds out his hand and they shake hands <sighs> and with tears in her eyes she walks through the gates uh. and is about to head up She's the one that got away. Yeah. And as she's about to head into the main building, she hears a achoo. And she's about to use her judo training, but she sees Richard hiding behind the column. And the man <sighs> looks like he's been there for a hot minute. Mr. Yu, what are you doing here? He walks over. Oh, I just, I just came out for some fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> she knows that he's lying. Um, he looks cold. It seems like you got a lot of air. <laughs> Richard is coughing and sniffling. No, well, I... Mr. Yu, I have something to tell you. Could you come to my place or shall I go to yours? Richard takes Gia up to his apartment and her eyes go wide like he's fully decked out his entire unit with twinkly lights, stockings, ornaments, gifts under the Christmas tree. And Gia is tearing up. What were you going to do if I didn't ask you to talk? Maybe I would have asked you to. 
To be honest with you, I went on a date with Albie today, my first love, and he also told me that he liked me. I heard. I stood out there for a while. Why did you turn him down? He seems nice. He's a nice guy. That's why I liked him. But I just don't feel the same way. Do you remember when I asked you to let me be honest with you? I've never once been honest about my feelings. I want to be honest now. When I was with Albi, I kept thinking about somebody else. Someone I thought I knew everything about, but I didn't at all. I'm sure there's more I don't know about him. But he's someone only I can know, and he's the person that knows me best. And guys, uh, she wraps her arms around his neck. Her heels pop off. She's on her tippiest tippy toes and she kisses him. Uh, and you can tell that Richard hesitates. And just after one little smooch, Gia pulls back and starts facing the door to leave. But Richard grabs her arm, leans her towards the wall and they start passionately making out. I didn't know they'd do this in K-dramas. Uh, she drops her purse to the ground. Richard pushes her up to the wall. She's He's like shifting Christmas decorations around while trying to grasp something for stability you know but before they get any further richard stops his hands are wrapped around gia's face and he hesitates gia's crying they're both crying and richard gets a buzz kill of a flashback of when gia is talking about solid land he can't be solid land because he's gonna die in 10 years so she grabs his collar and pulls him in for another makeout session but he can't stop thinking about that he's gonna die and he pulls back i'm not the right person for you because i want you to be happy you're gonna regret this Gia is completely wrecked. She looks at him absolutely disheartened, but makes out the words, I'm not going to regret it. But nothing Gia is going to say or do is going to convince Richard. Daddy is insecure. So he grabs her wrist by one hand and Loki pushes her out the front door and just like closes the door on her face. And she's standing there, snotty, tears pooling. And it's just a lot. The next morning, she is still in the same clothes. She barely got any sleep. And she looks for her phone to see if she has any missing messages. Nothing. And somehow, she unglues herself from the couch to get dressed and ready to work. Hannah's there waiting to hear all about her date with LB. And she looks over to see Richard's desk is empty. Is Mr. Yu not coming to work today? Mrs. Yang turns to her. No, do you have something to report? He took a day off today. He's sick. I think he's caught a cold. It's been really cold lately, but this is still a first for him. Gia gets back home that night and starts prepping some porridge. Yeah, for Richard. And she has these flashbacks of when Michael would be sick, she would make this porridge and he would just be so mad. He would literally swat away spoonfuls of the porridge. Hey, I said I didn't need it. You're so stubborn. Did you have to make it? You didn't have to do this for me. You did it for yourself. I told you I hate porridge. Still, it's good for you. Can you just take one more bite? I said I'm not going to, god damn it. And she pushes down the feeling, and now Gia's standing there in front of Richard's apartment door with a thermos of hot chook in her hands. This is so like me. And even though Richard pretty much slams the door in her face the night before, she hesitates, mm. ends up ringing the doorbell, and nothing. Is he not home? And she's almost ready to leave when she hears a thud and a punk. Her favorite kitty cat screech right after and it sounds like something fell and Pang the cat is meowing and like it's just something's wrong. So Gia starts to panic and out of pure concern, she types in Richard's passcode and runs into the place and Pang the cat is standing next to Richard who is passed out on the floor with an empty mug that fell from his hands. Mr. You, Mr. You, Mr. You, get up. Let's go to the hospital. Gia's grabbing his forehead to check his temperature and he's burning up. She's grabbing him, trying to lift him to his feet and Richard hears the sound of her voice. Gia? You can't always see me like this. Are you okay? Doctor came by, took my meds. Are you still anxious? Does it still feel rocky? I hope you don't feel like you're on a boat. He sounds delirious on the meds, by the way. That's when Gia remembers. The boat? Uh. She puts two and two together. She's just now realizing this is the man that she met when her dad died. Wait, what? The college night when she was so drunk. Oh. Yeah. And how did she feel? Yeah, and Richard just says, I hope you're stable and happy because you're a good person. And Gia says, you're the one. The one in college, you were that man. And he chuckles and he grabs her by the face. I'm so hurt. I knew it was you from the moment I saw you. You've always been in my heart. And he grabs her hand and leans into her cute little, like, 
I don't know. He leans his cute drunk on Med's face into her palm and he kisses it. And it's such a non-toxic man thing to do. Like there's something about kissing the inside of a hand. And they have this moment. Gia had no idea that this man that she was looking at and falling in love with was the first man to ever take care of her years and years ago. Meanwhile, LB is low-key looking for a purpose to live. Like, he's barely able to put dishes together because Gia rejected him. And then he gets an alert that there is someone waiting for him inside the restaurant. And it's Hannah. She's sitting in the same spot that Richard used to sit in. (sighs) You're so much like your brother. What? Am I? That is such an insult, sir. You're kind of mean. I came here to talk about strategy. Hannah pulls out two tickets to a musical that's in town and pushes them up to his face. She suggests that he should take Gia. But LB starts crying. And she looks so confused. What? Well, I, the thing is, Gia and I, LB can't even get through his sentence, okay? He's fully a shell of a man. He's losing his freaking mind. And Hannah is trying to make him feel better. Trying to get it together. Is Hannah into him? Not yet. Oh. But I think they will be. Uh. Yeah. Meanwhile... Gia spends all night tending to Richard, like wiping his face with the towel and just being on his bed with him. And Richard wakes up the next morning to Gia laying in bed beside him and he jumps up and Gia jumps up too. Oh, hey, are you okay? Your fever's down. That's good. Oh, shit. It's time for work. We got to go to work. Richard holds her back and stops her. Did something happen last night? Wait, don't tell me last night was a mistake. She's toying with him. She's acting like they slept together. (laughs) <laughs> no that didn't happen i took medicine so i was out of it and i thought i thought seeing you was a dream oh okay looks like you remember everything then let's go to work so gia jumps out of bed getting ready to start the day and she's the only one working remember richard feels like he needs more answers though just like how embarrassing was last night he starts following her around the apartment to ask her more what did i say last night i don't know you were having a very surprising side you talked pamal to me which is like you talk casually to me oh my god i'm so sorry You said that you hoped that I was stable and happy and that you recognized me the moment that we met again. Also that you continued to like me and that you wanted to be land for me. Gia Gia stops him and wraps herself around him. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. Richard tries to pull away. Look, we might regret it, but let's regret it together if we do. Then it'll be okay. To tell you the truth, when you told me how you felt, I thought it was the reason I came back. To be able to trust someone again, like, like someone and... Be happy. I can do that, right? Yeah. And he pulls her in for a hug. And it's official. Now they're like showing up to work at different times. Like they'd be spending the night together. But he would drop her off like a block away from work so that nobody knows they'd be sharing looks and it's just so cute like i cannot get it off like they have those lovey-dovey honeymoon smiles because it's like the stupid smile like you look so stupid but you look so happy like you feel so good so it's going too well is what you're telling me and like you know what that means that means a white van's about to pull up exactly exactly Now, Michael, he's really upset about all of this because he's just upset about his life, but he needs to be committed to his bad decisions. He has Stacy meet his mom because they need to get married because remember, he needs that house money and Michael's mom is just pissed. Michael, do you not know anyone except women on your team at work? You messed up with that terrible woman, Gia, and and this one doesn't seem that much better. I'm going to be honest, Stacy. I didn't think that my son would get married this way. Still, since you graduated from Korea University, Stacy's eyes go wide and she turns to Michael. The closest Stacy got to Korea University was being best friends with someone from Korea University. But Michael is married to the lie because he has to get married, remember? Ah. Yes, mom, she was a business major. She's smart, good at her job, and she'll work after she gives birth. Isn't that right, Stacy? Michael's lucky that Stacy understands the excitement. I like studying, mother. Sons usually take after their mom, so don't be too upset. My mother didn't think that I'd get married this way either, but I convinced her. Also, she adores Michael. Yeah, that's true. So your dad ran a business in Busan and your mom's a teacher? Yes, before my dad passed away, our family was very happy. I just want to live like my parents did. They loved each other so much and were very devoted. Michael's looking at her like, I've never heard about this in my entire life like i don't know what's going on from what i can tell from the cooking classes i can tell that you're smart i lack a lot i hope you can teach me mother-in-law firstly a woman needs to read the right man judging by your taste in men you're very smart 
<laughs> so eat up. You're right. Sons take after their moms. That's why Michael takes after me and he's very smart. You're right, mother. Stacy and Michael are all smiles, holding each other's hands and sends Mama Michael off in a taxi. The meeting goes relatively well. I mean, I guess birds of a feather flock together because it seems like Michael's mom actually likes Stacy. Yeah. And as soon as the taxi leaves, Stacy immediately changes her tone. Korea University. Why did you lie about that? I did it for you. Gia graduated from there. So how could I tell her that you went to a no name college? You wanted a fresh start, Michael. Why lie? Lie? Does your mom adore me? How can she when we never met her? Goodness, let's not get sensitive over shit like this. Everything's going to work out. I think my mom approves of you. I'll tell you the date of the full family meeting, okay? See you soon. Bye. Michael leaves Stacy just dry in the middle of the street, literally on the crosswalk. And he just throws his coat over his shoulders and starts walking away. What the fuck is yeah. wrong with him? Anyway, there's a lot that happens. Mrs. Yang starts standing up to her husband because she's getting she's getting real confident thanks to Gia, but also Mr. Lee, who's giving her pep talks in the storage room. But it's not really pep talks. It's like that stoic, like, don't be like that. You're worth it type vibes, like kind of like Richard vibes, but older and more mature, and more stoic, and more intense. Anyway, moving on. Richard and Gia end up traveling all the way to Busan, which is her hometown, and just having, like, the cutest little date. And it's just a lot. Like, they're finally in love. Everything is going well until they head into the office the next day, and Mr. Kim is sitting, because he's no longer a manager, Mr. Kim is now sitting in manager Yang's desk, reminiscing about the good old days when he was manager Kim. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So she walks in, Mrs. Yang walks in, and she's like, I don't know what to do. And Gia's giving her like, give it to him, give it to him, good. And manager Kim gets up, hey, Yang, you're here. God, this chair recognizes its owner. It fits my butt perfectly. Oh. Mrs. Yang is glaring at him. Miss Yang, no, I guess manager Yang. You'll return it to me soon enough. So use the chair carefully, okay? Miss Yang looks over at Gia and Gia's like, you got to go in. So in front of everybody, manager Yang goes, assistant manager Kim, where's your proposal? What? What, what did you just say? Your ideas are never that good. So you should at least be diligent. Oh, don't worry. I didn't say it sucked, but it's just not that good. Mrs. Yang is now ripping into Mr. Kim, just like a whole new booty hole. And he's fucking speechless. You know hierarchy better than anyone else. You know how it works. You're not the manager here anymore, but isn't sitting here uncomfortable then? I need to know your standards in order to meet them. Why are you speaking to me like this, Miss Yang? What are your, where are your formalities? That's how you spoke to me. I figured it was okay because I'm your boss now, but I'm respectful while you're not. And it's strange. So what shall we do? Shall we both be more respectful or shall we speak casually to one another? Everything about this scene was so satisfying. He tucks his tail, walks back to his seat, and the only other person that looks remotely empathetic is Michael. By the way, he did transfer, but like five cubicles down. I think he's in like marketing team three now. <laughs> so it's like, he's still there. I don't know what happened. Anyway, that night, the whole office has been invited to Mrs. Yang's parents' cookie house, beef house, like a Korean barbecue place, to celebrate her promotion. Everyone except Mr. Kim makes their way to Mrs. Yang's restaurant. And it's so cute. Like you can clearly tell that her parents absolutely love her. Just like truly. And her husband is now working there as like a kogi flipper. As like a server. Yeah. And it's just, um, yeah, it's a lot. Mr. Lee ends up showing up, but he's very late. And before he reaches the front door, he sees a couple, a man and a woman sneaking back into the restaurant. The girl is seen buttoning her cardigan back up and the man is wiping lipstick off of his face. The man tells the woman to go inside first. Mr. Lee stops dead in his tracks and he's just analyzing everything that's going on. Then we see Mrs. Yang come out. Honey! Mr. Lee just caught Mrs. Yang's husband cheating on oh. her at her With promotion who? dinner. We don't know yet. Wow. Honey, where were you? You could have said hi. And she sees Mr. Lee walk up behind and she diverts, his, diverts her attention. Mr. Lee, come on in. And it's just, listen, I don't know what's... 
Listen, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's not going to be good. Meanwhile, Stacy and Michael's mom are busy planning for the wedding. And it's Gia 2.0, but Michael's mom actually seems to like Stacy. They're going wedding gown shopping. And again, the theme for this wedding is like the 1980s, but not in a good way. Michael's mom is probably just trying to relive her own wedding right now. She sends Stacy home with a stack of invitations and they just all look really cheap and not great. And Stacy's just over it. And Michael's not helping her. He refuses to do anything anything but play video games he won't even stand up to his own mother like he's literally useless and she's getting frustrated she has no leverage in any of this and she needs to at least be able to show her face around public again and that would mean they would have to get married maybe they could spin it as some sort of epic love story that they had that just was inevitable star-crossed lovers but at work Gia gets a text message from Stacy, and even though Michael wanted to keep everything under wraps, Stacy has opened the floodgates. Gia sees that she got a wedding invitation to Michael and Stacy's wedding, and she immediately sends it to Richard, who Richard sends to HR, and they send it to the whole freaking company through the company email. Michael slams open the door to Mr. Lee's office. Sir, what's with the email? Who said to send out the company announcement like that? Name and department, please. Mr. Lee's assistant talks to him. A wedding announcement for Michael Park, marketing team three. (laughs) Well, aren't you getting married? Well, well, I am, but when an employee gets married, announcements and monetary gifts are made by the company and the, the team member will be given days off to attend the wedding and you need days off to go to your honeymoon. Is that not correct? That's all right, but, but it's my wedding and I didn't ask you to say anything. Did I ask you to announce it? This is insane. Mr. Lee is not even registering any of this. His assistant leans in and says, he's, it seems he's in a difficult position because he's marrying Miss King's best friend. I mean, it's frowned upon by the office workers. They're just talking in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, Michael is pissed and everybody knows and it's going to be a whole juicy shit show. Meanwhile, Gia and Richard's relationship is just too perfect. So, you know, it's going to go down. And just like that, the big day has arrived. Michael and Stacy's wedding. Gia is touching up her lipstick before she leaves. And Richard is like, hey, are you ready? Yeah, I, I, I just need to grab my jacket and stuff. Just a second. Gia, wait, can you sit for a second? Gia looks like her happiness reversed her age by 10 years, like she's glowing. But Richard Daddy is never satisfied. He sits her down and takes the green authentic box that he had gotten months ago and shows her the fat, juicy diamond necklace that he's been waiting to get her. How, how big is it? It's massive. What is this? For you, Gia, because you deserve the best. And he puts the necklace around Gia, the finishing touch, the creme de la creme, and they walk out very happy. Meanwhile, Stacy looks like she's aged 30 years overnight. She's pretty much got the same getup that Gia had in her past life. The tiara, the unflattering makeup, the costume jewelry, the wedding dress with the poofy shoulder. She looks like a deflated balloon. It's a lot. And might I add, Gia rocked it a lot better. Anyways, Stacy's all alone, sitting in the back of the wedding hall, waiting for her time to walk down the aisle. No bridesmaid, no family has showed up so far she looks at herself in the mirror and she's trying to hype herself up it's okay you look pretty you're getting a family i won it seems like this that make me kind of feel bad for stacy and when i say i feel bad i feel pity meanwhile michael's mom bursts in wearing a bright pink handbook which she almost looks better than the bride i feel like was the goal and by the way traditionally the mother of the groom wears a blue handbook and the mother of the bride wears pink so this is actually pretty disrespectful yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, Amani, uh, my stomach, it's not poking out, is it? Right? My, well, it better not. That's why we're having a shotgun wedding. By the way, where are your friends? Are you sure you told them the right time? Yes, yes, I did. At that moment, another woman runs into the back room. She does not look like Stacy at all, but she's wearing a dark pink and purple handbook and is playing the part. Hello, I'm so sorry I'm late. I'm Stacy's mother. Michael's mom stands up. Hello, there must have been some traffic. Yes, there was. I only lived in Busan. Seoul's traffic has been surprising me every day. (sighs) Stacy, you look incredible. I'm so sorry I'm late. They take their quick photos and Mama Michael heads out to greet all of their guests because it's basically her wedding at this point. And Stacy starts calling out her paid actress. Why are you so late, Aduma? I told you to come early. Sorry, there was so much traffic. There was an accident near here. Whatever. Do you remember everything? My dad passed away. You're a teacher. Of course, your dad ran a business, left a lot of wealth, and I'm set up for later in life. What about friends? 
for 11 people, $200 each, right? So Stacy hired people, hired friends to come to her own wedding. Why is that? I guess all of her friends dropped her. She got no friends. Uh, Meanwhile, what yeah. What about her mom? Oh, I think it's going to be a whole storyline. Meanwhile, Michael's greeting people at the wedding hall entrance, and he's wondering where all of his real friends are. Like, I don't know. Maybe he should have pulled a Stacy and hired some friends as well because nobody's showing up. Nobody wants to be associated with these two cheaters except Michael's friend that knows that he was sleeping with Stacy. Do you, do you remember that guy that would like show up at the treadmill and he'd be like, oh, are, did you hit a home run? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The beginning. Yes. So he shows up and he's like, hey, you're marrying her after all. You said that she wasn't the wife type. Michael's like, shh, stop that, Okay. Did you come alone? Where are the others? Pretty much all of Michael's friends are going to be a no-show, but at least one last couple makes their way up to the ceremony. Richard and Gia. They look so good. Okay, Gia's wearing this like two-piece pants suit situation. She's also wearing white, which is pretty bold. Her diamond necklace is glistening and she's swinging around her pink Chanel bag that Michael once got her. It's, it's giving royalty. Someone should be waiting at the door announcing their arrival. Michael's friend takes notice. Whoa, who are they? Are they friends of the bride or something? First of all, Michael looks like he just saw a ghost. The way that this man looks pale, like he's about to vomit, he cannot take his eyes off of Gia. And Richard takes a step back so that she can have her proper little moment of congratulations. And Gia walks up to Michael. Congratulations on your wedding. She hands him an envelope. I think you should probably read this in private when you're alone. And this man is such a little weedy. In this moment, he can get, barely get past the fact that Gia looks so freaking good and doesn't even find it skeptical that at all that she's even here. He manages a smile. You came. Uh, you look pretty. And um, thanks, but you didn't have to. You're going to eat before you go, right? Gia chuckles and in an innocent way, like she's pretending to be nervous. And he can't help but notice her fat diamond necklace. Wait, isn't that... But Richard Daddy knows the best signal to show up. He interrupts them. Gia, let's go. So Gia and Richard head to their seats and Michael is starting to get the feeling of regret just pouring into his soul. His friend is no help either. His friend is basically on the side like, oops. <laughs> oh, wait, the friend burped? Uh, yeah, basically. His friend is on the side burping. I thought I'd seen her before. Is that your ex-girlfriend? Gia Kang? Holy sh**, she's a goddess. You dumped her? No way. You got dumped, didn't you? I thought you said you dumped her. I don't believe you. Michael's angry. Damn it, stop talking. You're so annoying. And he marches off. Now, at this point, Michael can't wait to see what Gia has gotten him. So he opens up the envelope and he's thinking it's going to be money because in Korean culture, you give money. It's actually a handful of papers, a formal complaint for all the money Michael has borrowed from Gia. She's suing him. She's taken his ass to court and he's pissed michael crumples up the piece of paper he tosses it because he's like i can't i can't deal with this right now so that's just one down and now all that's left is gia has to take care of stacy she walks into the back room to see stacy and minutes before the ceremony stacy is just sitting there gia is trying so hard to force a smile but it's not really giving genuine like stacy has to break the ice why are you so late, Gia? I, th I thought you weren't going to come. You caught my bouquet. She's remembering in the past life, Stacy was the only one to catch her bouquet. Huh? Oh, come on. Y you want the bouquet? That's not really right. Michael's parents know your face and everything. That's true. The dress looks good on you. Right? Um, my mother-in-law picked it for me. It's a little disappointing, but the elders like it. So what can I do? She thinks of me as her daughter. Gia just starts cackling in her face. I'm so glad you guys get along. And I think Stacy at this moment is trying so hard to convince herself that she won. But it is so clear to Stacy, to Gia, to everybody that Stacy lost. And she's forcing her tears back. Let's, let's take a picture. Do you want to grab the photographer, Gia? No, I don't think that's necessary. Gia gets real close to Stacy and gives her the most genuine slap in the face, but it's not with her hands. She's classy. She does it with her words. Congratulations on picking up my trash. And she throws her nope. pink Chanel purse onto the floor by Stacy's feet. 
Michael bought me this. So use it or sell it. Do whatever you want with it. And she walks away. Stacy looks like she's about to kill everyone in that wedding venue. She's shaking, but it's too late now. She's minutes away from marriage. She heads out to the closed front doors with her bouquet and all these staff fixing her wedding dress. And she's trying to convince herself. Trash? She threw Michael away? No, that's not possible. I'm marrying Michael. She thinks back to the work retreat, all the times that Gia convinced her that she, Gia, is going to marry Michael and start a family. There's no way Gia would have tricked her into taking Michael from her. No, I, I stole him. The man in the family that used to be Gia's, they're all mine now. I, I won. I'm starting over now. And she paints on this giant smile. And as soon as the doors open wide, she pretends to be the happiest bride in the world. And she walks down the aisle. I mean, she might have dissolved some Botox just for this moment. And Gia is having a blast. She's sitting in the back with Richard on one side, Hannah on the other side. And Gia is so grateful to finally have a memory of this wedding without her in it <laughs> and she gets to see the whole wedding unfold after the ceremony the bridal party starts taking pictures but hannah notices how different stacy looks from her mom she's like that that's not normal but gia doesn't um gia doesn't say anything it's Do they interesting look that different yeah and it does feel like something's going on with stacy's mom but we have no idea and gia doesn't tell anyone yet hmm. gia just thinks to herself if my memory serves me correct stacy's mom is still alive Weirdly enough, someone taps Gia on the shoulder. Elby, what are you doing here? Stacy sent me the invitation, but the problem is he gets interrupted by a stampede of black high heels clomping their way through the door. It's the high school bullies, the mean girlies. They're ironically dressed for the streets, the 80s streets at that. Elby looks on innocently. I showed the invitation to Regina and they came um, dressed like that. The Regina of the group demands the whole wedding's attention. Everyone stop. The bride's old friends are here. We're here. Elby whispers to Gia. They're sorry, so they're going to take revenge for you. Bro, uh, Gia, at a wedding? Exactly. Gia did not ask for any of this, but I mean, I guess, I don't know who is it hurting, right? Hannah's eating this up. Stacy's watching them march over to her while Michael's like, what the fork are, are your friends doing here? Regina walks up. Stacy, I'm here. Who's getting the bouquet? Shall I? Gia might be your other half or whatever, but you're marrying her man after all. How could she catch the bouquet? That wouldn't make any sense, right? Iconic. Listen, I exonerate every single one of them. May the icon live forever. People start whispering. Is that true? Did she steal her best friend's man? And now that the wedding is over, Michael's parents look like they want to crawl into a hole. And now that Michael's a married man, he's like, Stacy, you handle it. And he walks out of there. It's crazy. Regina's giving her a sarcastic shrug and Mama Michael decides to butt in. And who are you people? Oh, I'm Stacy's best friend. I'm the left ball. I'm the what? Left ball. I don't get it. And then another friend pops up and says, I'm the right ball, like testes. What? It's just very vulgar. And Michael's mom is like, who are these vulgar people and where do they come from? Vulgar? What are you thinking, ma'am? We're like her eyeballs. We're not talking about those. And we're the apple of each other's eyes. Come on, what are you thinking? Something vulgar? Okay, guys, these girls are crazy, okay? Do you know whose family's wedding this is? And Regina's amused. The family who raised a dog that cheated on his girlfriend with her best friend. Michael's mom brings her claws up to her head and she starts going for the eyeballs. She's chasing them around the wedding hall. But the mean girlies, they decide to go just go around the altar. They go around Stacy. They're doing circles just to make Michael's mom run around for them. They finally get kicked out by the staff and Regina gives a big genuine smile to Gia as she gets escorted out. Richard tells Gia, you've got some great friends. Well, they were pretty great when they bullied me, too. Meanwhile, the wedding spirals downward from here and everybody is just getting ready to leave. Like nobody wants to stick around for all of this. This is just absolutely unhinged. And everyone is gone except for Richard, Gia, LB and Hannah. Richard tells Gia that she should probably get some rest. So she follows his lead. Basically, this is confirming to LB and Hannah that she chose Richard. Gia tells LB that she'll call him later and waves bye to Hannah. And they leave LB and Hannah to figure out what to do next. And Hannah awkwardly turns 
I'm going to go eat at the reception. Do you want to join me? If you're okay with eating somewhere else, I can buy. Of course. That sounds great. But my manager was supposed to come too. Where is she? Mrs. Yang was supposed to be here. If you can't tell already, they're for sure each other's vibes. Okay, come on. Like the cook and the foodie, it's been real from the start. And speaking of romance, Mr. Lee is working on the weekend and he hears Mrs. Yang crying in the supply room. Not on office time, you don't, he's thinking. I told you not to come in here. He gets concerned because she's slunched over on a sitting on a box crying. It's the weekend. What are you doing here? I can't go home right now. My daughter's at home and I haven't gotten myself started, sorted out yet. And I've just been so busy. I, I didn't even get a chance to hear the results. And I heard it over the phone just now. And honestly, Mr. Lee is still stone cold. And I think that a part of him cares for Mrs. Yang because she's stalling so much. And clearly it's a big thing, but she's not telling him exactly what's wrong. And he's getting agitated. Calm down and speak clearly. No, you know what? Let's just leave. Mrs. Yang smiles out of pain with tears streaming down her face. And she says, I have stomach cancer. The fate went to Mrs. Yang. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God. And you guys, it's not even over yet because Gia is sitting in the passenger seat of Richard's car and it's like a cute little vibe. They're holding hands. They're listening to music. She has no idea Mrs. Yang has stomach cancer. Everything is holly jolly good times. But of course, episode 11 is not episode 11 unless the main ship breaks up. So let's just rip the bandage off because the writers blessed us so hard with this episode and the previous episode. And now we must pay it the tax. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. They get back home and they're locked in hand in hand, but something stops Richard. A woman exits from the front door of the building and you can just tell by the high heels. It's not, it's not clonking like Stacy. It's click clacking. Is she's it the what girl from she's Japan? She's wearing these expensive heels and a beautiful baby blue dress and a coat and she walks right up to Richard. I came to talk for a moment, but I guess this is a little awkward. Richard just stands there in shock, gripping Gia's hand. The woman looks like Stacy, but richer, classier, smarter. Stacy, but if Stacy had a billion dollars to play with to be evil, like that's her vibe. Like Stacy is about to feel like an elementary park playground bully. Yeah. This she is the just, girl, right? She's just, yeah, she's just got some presence to her that's just out of this world. She turns to Gia. Hello, I'm Yura, Richard's fiance. Wait. I guess ex-fiance, since he caught off the engagement. I didn't know it was because he had another woman. And this is the end. Uh, ah! So, what, what, I mean, like, what is she here for? Okay, so I just heard... Ah! I heard some spoilers from the RM team, and they were telling me... Oh, Stacy is nothing. Stacy is not even the villain of this show, actually. Oh, this girl's evil. She's so evil, they said. Like, pure evil. Like, there will be episodes. They said this is, like, the last few episodes of Harry Potter. Like, the last few movies of Harry. Like, we got the... This was um the Phoenix. Yeah. No, no, no. This is, like, the Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, like, the Chamber of Secrets. And now we're about to head into Deathly Hollows. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's what I was thinking. Like, Stacy is not that bright. Yeah. Like, she really did all of that to, <laughs> to get married to Michael, so. Yeah, but this one's really bright and, like, yeah. really nasty and really evil just for the sheer fun of being fucking evil. <sighs> okay, that's good. That's good. That's good? <laughs> That's, That's good. good? Yeah, that was too easy, man. What? So that is it. And I will see you guys on Monday for part five. <laughs> <laughs> the world's longest series ever. Please let me know if you guys get sick of it and I will stop it. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Blah!